right here and right now. And we are ready to set it off. The kickoff will come back down to JoJo Walker of Maryland at the two. Walker trying to find an alley on the left side of the field. He's found one. JoJo Walker with a great start to the ball game for Maryland. He takes it out near midfield, pushed out of bounds finally at the 48-yard line of Maryland. Nice return by the 5'9 senior, JoJo Walker. Let's take one more look. Anytime you can get holes and the kickoff coverage team doesn't get a hand on him, JoJo Walker has the ability to make you miss. Right there, he gave up a few extra yards by ducking out of bounds there. He could he could have took his head down and got a few more. There's a look at the starting quarterback, Chris. Sam Hollenbach, 6'5", 218 pounds, a junior, completing 61% of his passes on the season, but 12 touchdown passes against 13 interceptions. After that 46-yard kickoff return, it's first down and 10 from near midfield. A single back set. Lance Ball in the backfield at his own 41. Hollenbach fires and what a great catch at the 49-yard line. Going up high, it's number 17, Danny Okendo. At the 49-yard line picked up about three yards. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people say that the, the gloves are, are responsible for a lot of that, those catches that you see nowadays. I think of Brandon Lloyd of the 49ers who's been on his own personal highlight film. But I'll tell you what, it's the athletes, Mark. Anytime you can go up and focus and catch a ball like that, that's outstanding hand-eye coordination and being an athlete. The receiver position could be key for Maryland today because of some impending suspensions. We'll tell you more about that in just a bit. A nice play fake. The catch made down near the 41-yard line. A good play that time by Jason Good as we take a look at the Nivea for Men starting lineups. The skill positions. Danny Melendez getting the start in place of Derek Fenner. Fenner, one of a couple players suspended for this game. We'll tell you more about that in just a bit. Here's a look at the offensive line, who right now is starting to get in a bit of a groove. Gaither, one of the leaders up there. Woods, McDonald, and Crummy, and Brandon Nixon. After the first down catch, the ball at the 40-yard line for the Turks on this, their opening drive of the game. A trips formation out to the left for Maryland. They run it into heavy traffic that time. It was Lance Ball stopped up by Ronaldo Moses. And let's take a look at this Wolfpack defense. Keep an eye on those two defensive ends, Manny Lawson and Mario Williams. They are 6'6 and 6'7 respectively. Presley and Tyler on the inside. The linebackers, a good group. Tullock, Hoyt, and Rump. Meanwhile, in the secondary, Marcus Hudson and A.J. Davis on the corners. Scott and Garland Heath, the safeties. No gain on that last play. Actually lost a yard. It's second down and 11 now for Maryland. A blitz coming off the edge, and Hollenbach sacked back at the 49-yard line. Good backside pressure by Jimmy Sutton of North Carolina State. That's the 30th sack this season for the pack defense. Well, if you're going to play a zone blitz, then Hollenbach has to be able to recognize blitz. The zone blitz is coming from the corner, so that means you have to have people to recognize the blitz as far as receivers on Hollenbach's got to be responsible for picking up the defender by himself and deliver the football you can't hold on to the football you know that blitz is going to get there eventually either throw it away or take a shot sets up a third down and 19 to go out of the shotgun again Hollenbach delivers a little bit high at the 30 yard line it was intended for Danny Melendez. And now Maryland will have to punt. An outstanding job by Marcus Hudson at his corner spot, taking away the deep throw. They tried to two-level him, one in front, one behind. Marcus wasn't biting, forced the overthrow by Hollenbach by his position. Hodlish into punt. Tremaine Hall stands back on his own 10-yard line for North Carolina State. Hodlish is second in the ACC in punting. English. A great kick, which will carry all the way into the end zone, a 49-yard boot. It'll come back out to the 20-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 for Marcus Stone and the North Carolina State offense. He's 3-1 and one as a starter, trying to continue that winning trend when we come back. 
Ralph Region watching now as his defense takes the field. Maryland punting before we went to commercial break. First down and 10 for the Wolfpack from their own 20 yard line. Stone with a play fake and a bootleg. All right, all right. Incomplete for Anthony Hill, the tight end. It'll be second down and 10. And here's a look at Marcus Stone. 6'4", 230 pounds, a sophomore. Seven touchdown passes against five interceptions on the season. But he's 3-1 and one as a starter and hasn't turned the ball over. Right now, he is a real curator of the offense and taking care of business that way. And Chuck Amato made him the starting quarterback five games ago after they lost to Wake Forest. And things have taken a turn for the better since that time. This time, the backs line up out of the eye. Off to number 24, Andre Brown, who also has been a big part of their success, brought down by Milton Harris that time as we take a look at our Nivea for Men starting lineups. From Main Hall, Brian Clark, a couple of talented receivers. The leading receivers, TJ Williams and Andre Brown, had a big breakout game against Southern Mississippi five games ago. Anthony Hill also in the backfield. Up front, it's Newby, McKeon, Harris, Herndon, and Morris for the Wolfpack. Six yards to go for the first down. It's going to call it third down and five. Ball at the 24. Marcus Stone does not suffer from lack of confidence, even though his numbers aren't that great. He feels very confident in his ability to do this. And he can tuck it under and run. Slides in. Apparently stopped just short of the 30-yard line where he had to get for the first down. Conrad Bolston made the stop on him that time. Well, this is youth and inexperience talking, Mark. You're, it's third down and six. You know, you got to know how far you're going to run. And if you're going to do the baseball slide short of the first down marker, you're not going to get a lot of respect from your linemen who are blocking. That's when he's got to put his neck roll on, lower his head, and go get the extra. Little line yap. No line yap there. No extra. And as a result, Chris, it's a three and out for the Wolfpack. JoJo Walker goes back to stand on his own 33-yard line. John Duraney punting from his own 14 for North Carolina State. A high spiral, a short one comes down, and it's fumbled. It's loose. And North Carolina State recovers the fumble. Marcus Hudson there to pounce on the loose ball. And the Wolfpack get the first break of the ball game. Well, indecision by JoJo. Ball's in the air and hits the ground. Get away from it because you never know the type of hop it's going to take. JoJo's a playmaker, so he wants to try to make a play. I don't mind guys picking up the ball off the bounce if there's not red shirts around you. The blocking wasn't great. JoJo made a poor decision, took his eyes off the ball when he tried to pick the ball up. Marcus Hudson there to pounce. Off the 37-yard punt, first and 10. Guys. Maryland with four turnovers last week, one of them coming back for an interception against Boston College. It cost them. We'll see if it cost them here on first down and 10. The toss goes to Andre Brown. Brown with a nice run down to the 25-yard line, picking up about eight. Brought down by Holloway. As we look at the Nivea for Men starting lineups for the Terps defense, Savage, Bolston, Moore, and Trey Covington. The linebackers conspicuously absent is William Kershaw. We'll tell you about that in just a bit. Jackson, the team's best player defensively. And in the secondary, McPherson and Wilson on the corners, Harris and Varner. Now Kershaw is in uniform on the sidelines, watching on second down and two. Brown stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and short. Now, there's a look at Kershaw. I have to explain that earlier this season, after a Halloween incident at a local restaurant and grill, Coach Parisian announced that he would suspend three players one game for violating team rules. Now, they have not identified those players due to federal privacy laws, but according to the Washington Post sources, Derek Fenner, the wide receiver who did not start today, William Kershaw, who you saw a few moments ago right there, and Drew Weatherly did not play against North Carolina, North Carolina a few weeks ago. Those are the three players. You see the angst on Kershaw's face. Wanting to be in there with his teammates, that's tough. It's tough to sit out when you're Time in a out. big game. And Kershaw, North Carolina State, to add to that, called by the head coach. Kershaw is also a North Carolina native, so he has to sit this one out with friends and family members watching. Timeout by the Wolfpack. We'll be back after this. ESPN's College Football is presented by Nokia. 
It's more than just a phone. It's your life in there. Nokia. And in part by Intel Centrino. For incredible entertainment in your lap, get Intel Centrino in your laptop. And Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Welcome back. Third down and two for North Carolina State. From the 25, the toss to Andre Brown. Wide side of the field. And he's got it and then some. First down, North Carolina State. At the 12-yard line, got a nice block for us on the edge from James Newby to pick up 13 yards. Well, when you're big and athletic and, and you have the ability to get on the edge and block edge defensive players like Newby, watch Newby. They're going to block down. He's going to pull around and seal. Here it comes. There's the block down. There's the pull around the seal. The linebacker to finish him off. Andre Brown straight ahead Ed. He knows where to go. No jukes and jives there. He knew he had to get the first down, put his head down, and run. This offense of North Carolina State came alive when Andre Brown assumed the leadership role. And here he is again. Brown trying to knife through that defense, but tripped up. Back at the 13-yard line by Dequel Jackson, the 6'1 senior, a finalist for the Bednarik Award as the National Defensive Player of the Year. He puts the D, Dequel does, in their defense. Yeah, he's a very good athletic linebacker, uh, big and tough and strong. Spoke with Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator. Said he's very instinctive and, and, and a big comparison to E.J. Henderson, but a little bit more athletic than E.J. Henderson. Those who remember E.J. Henderson playing for the Vikings now. Fine linebacker from Maryland. That is the marquee player of that defense. His teammates call him the Quella Monster. <laughs> Daryl Blackman now flanked out as a receiver. Blitz coming and incomplete by Stone at the 10 yard line. Milton Harris came with the pressure that time and third down and 11 now for the Pack. Milton Harris, a former walk on, really one of the great surprises this year for that defense of Maryland. We talked about Dequel Jackson being a Benaric finalist along with A.J. Hawk and Pazluzny of Penn State. All three of those guys are outstanding linebackers and they. One thing that they have in common is that they all can get out and run. Back has to get down to the two yard line for the first down. Stone working out of the shotgun. Falling to his knees and it's incomplete. Josh Wilson in on the coverage that time of Tremaine Hall. I think his knee touched the ground before he threw the football and it looked to me like the official was looking right at it. You see right here he's going to overstride. Yeah, he should be down. The ball should be down right there. That's a spotting foul. There you go. Well, instead, uh, sorry, Chris, no. John, yeah, John Duraney comes in now to attempt a field goal. It looks like they're going to review this. Well, they have to review it, Mark, and, and it's it's a big deal because you're adding you're adding 10 or 10 yards to the field goal, and that's a lot of distance for a kicker. But it was clear that the knee was down. This is a, a non-existent. Uh, Non-problem call. There's no irre-disputable, indisputable evidence or irrefutable, but there's Either no or. evidence. You'll see right here. <laughs> Trey Covington, Chris, was the guy applying the pressure that time on Marcus Stone coming in from the right side here. So watch his footwork. His footwork, he gets a little bit wide. He loses balance. And actually, it's a heck of an effort of getting rid of the football. But right there, he's down. The ball should be spotted right there. And the official was looking right at it, and I don't, I don't know if the game happened too fast for him, but he's going to find out that uh, he missed that one. Well, we're going to get the decision After here. After further review, the quarterback's knee was down at the 20-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Well, they're going to move it back. This now becomes a 37-yard field goal attempt by John Duraney on fourth down coming up. More look on that pressure by Covington and where his knee goes down exactly. You're going to see it's it's a no-brainer. Now that ball should be down at the 19-yard line, not the 20-yard line. Rainey, 13 of 16 on the season. This one from 38 yards out, and that is true. <laughs> Rainey gives North Carolina State a three to nothing lead, capitalizing on the fumbled punt by JoJo Walker. Chuck Amato's team trying to get back to bowl position. We'll be back after this.
And welcome back, everyone. Carter Finley Stadium here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Three nothing ball game. North Carolina State leading Maryland and ESPN College Football presented by Nokia. Take a look at the last scoring drive. Seven plays moved to 13 yards after the fumbled punt by Jojo Walker. Walker back deep to get this kickoff. Five yards deep. And they'll come out to the 20. Let's go downstairs to Rob Stone. Uh, last season, Sam Hollenbach was a fourth stringer who had serious thoughts about transferring. And now here he is, the starter. But he's facing a lot of scrutiny and some pain. He has a slight separation of his left shoulder. That's his non-throwing shoulder. And also, a lot of costly errors, Mark, in the red zone last week, which led to a one-on-one -on -one meeting with his offensive coordinator, Charlie Tapp. Had him in recently, closed the door, nothing mean coming out of it just saying hey guys the keys to this conversation are less freelancing and critical errors please and let's get back to reading coverages and playing within the system yeah, great point rob as he got back in the film room the next day after that loss against boston college they're going to run it this is lance ball turns the corner and squares those shoulders up ball makes it out to the 27 yard line got a nice block that time from nixon uh, Let's take one more look at that turnover that Rob mentioned a few moments ago in the red zone. One of four turnovers against Boston College. Hey, Maryland had their opportunities last week. The one thing you notice with, with Hollenbach right there is eyes only stayed on one place, and that was one of the things Coach Taft addressed with Hollenbach was, look, you have progressions to go through. What are you seeing? And Hollenbach started to rely too heavily on his tight end. Vernon Davis, he's got to come off and go through his progression. If Vernon's not there, you got to deliver the football to where we want you to throw the football. Not where you want it, where we want it. Yes. A nice hit by Oliver Hoyt, who brought the noise that time. Well, we talked about it, Mark, and that's, that's, that's pretty close to a slobber knocker right there. If anything else, it's a perfect form tackle. You see Oliver Hoyt right here. Watch him come and fill. Nobody comes off and blocks him. Here he comes. He come right in. Missed assignment by the fullback. One step and wrap, two steps and squeeze. Bring your feet and come with some bad intentions. That's a perfect form tackle. He ran through the guy, not just to him. Outstanding, Oliver. Thank you very much for that. Kind of symbolizes the type of immediacy in today's game. The winner of this becomes bowl eligible out of the backfield. A nice little screen. Out to ball, close to the first down marker. Depends on what kind of spot he gets. And it appears as if he did get the first down right around the 31-yard line. And they do give it to him. Lance Ball with a nice catch. 5'9 sophomore. Had a major breakthrough back in the Navy game earlier this season and also later against Virginia when he ran for 163 yards. And then against Boston College last week, had 135 yards on the ground. Well, I like the call to get the ball back into his hands after he took a shot like he did from Oliver Hoyt. Put it in his hands and let him do something with the mail. He did, he got he delivered the first down. First down and 10, backside pressure, and Hollenbach got rocked by Mario Williams. Well, when you're 6'7", 290 pounds, not only does he make the fans in Carter Finley Stadium jump, he's making scouts jump all over the place. You see Mario Williams coming from the outside, just beat him with speed. I mean, with that kind of size and that kind of speed, that's a tough duty for the offensive tackle to handle. He right. has the moves, he can counter, but he has speed off the edge, which cannot be coached. Second down and 18. Let's see if he gets energized. There he is again. That was his 10th sack of the season. A little inside handoff this time to Lance Ball. Ball brought down to the 31-yard line by Marcus Hudson. Got some of that yardage back as we are here at Carter Finley Stadium, Maryland and North Carolina State. Both looking for their sixth win of the season, which would make them bowl eligible. That's what the winner gets today. The loser, simply put, has its season come to an end. Chuck Amato said that he wants his team to come out and play loose. Have a little bit of fun. Frugian had a similar message for his Maryland team. Third down and ten, and looking into the eyes of quarterback Sam Hollenbach. They get to the 41 yard line for the first down. Two receivers to the top of your screen. Hollenbach fires high, complete to his roommate, Danny Melendez who's getting the start in place of Derek Fenner, who was suspended for this game. Melendez, 
picks up the first down for Maryland. This is great feet right here by Hollenbach. He knows the pressure's coming. They're bringing four off one side. He just slides, buys himself some time, protects the football, and delivers kind of a little bit of a fadeaway to his trusted roommate, Melendez, who goes up and does a nice job catching the ball with two hands. You know, Rob mentioned Hollenbach thought about transferring when he was a four-string quarterback. So did Melendez. They were both plotting as to what school they both might attend together. After that 13-yard pickup, it's first down and 10. Hollenbach hands it off to Lance Ball. Brought down by Tank Tyler that time. And tonight, folks, Marcus Vick and number five, Virginia Tech, try to clinch their spot in the ACC championship game they take on North Carolina. College football primetime presented by Polaroid on ESPN tonight at 745 Eastern. North Carolina, North Virginia Tech, also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Dead ball, personal foul, number 19 on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Well, that one hurts, and of course, we all know the history, Chris, of personal, not personal fouls, but penalties with respect to North Carolina State. Earlier this season, one of the most penalized teams in the league. Yeah, I, they're calling a personal foul there, and I, the rule is, if you're a player, don't stand around the pile. You gotta go clean up the pile. That's a little touchy for me. Again, I'm, I'm a little bit liberal on being able to clean out piles, but he's just doing his job running the football. First down and 10 out of the shotgun. Lance Ball got about two yards down to the 36. Oliver Hoyt once again in on the tackle and another flag on the play. And I said that North Carolina State earlier this season was one of the most penalized teams in the conference, but in the last four or five games, they've gotten a lot better with respect to them. Some penalties are acceptable, some aren't acceptable. Like that, that's unacceptable because that's, a, that's something that you can control. A lot of times, you're going to hold, you're going to hit guys. You're going to come in late once in a while. You don't want to take away the aggressiveness. Bit of a, here's the call from the official. It's against Maryland. Maryland at the other end of the spectrum, the second fewest penalty yards in the ACC, but Surprising when you really look at the numbers, because some of the more successful teams are also some of the more penalized teams in football. Well, I think, again, there are acceptable penalties, and, and as long as they're aggressive penalties and not dirty penalties, that's fine. You live with those. It's the, the mental concentration penalties that kill you, like the illegal procedure right there that'll drive a coach crazy. On the receiver screen, incomplete at the 46-yard line, intended for Melendez from Holland. Oh, uh, if you run a screen and it takes that long to develop, we're not the only ones that can see it from the press box. The players feel that. The line is the offensive line is not getting depth. They're trying to get out on the perimeter to block. And that time, Tank Tyler would out there. If Melendez would have caught it, Tank Tyler would have tanked him. Would have been done. But you can't. If you're going to run that split screen, it's got to be a little bit quicker. He who hesitates is lost. Maryland has lost three of the last four games. They need a win here to become bowl eligible. Second down and 15. And a man. Little heat coming, Mario Williams. And it's caught by JoJo Walker in and out of the arms of Marcus Hudson into the arms of Walker, but there's a flag down on the play right at the 35-yard line. So let's see who it's against. It's against the pack. They got uh, holding on Hudson, but I tell you, that's great recognition by Hollenbach. What about JoJo Walker atoning for that earlier miscue on the fumbled punt? Great sense of concentration there, Chris. Anytime you're playing press coverage, you do not want to give up the inside. They were playing what we call cover one. They had a safety deep, and they were playing man-to-man -man on the edges. And Hudson gave up the inside. And Mario Williams is coming with something to prove today. This is senior time. Last time in Carter-Finley Stadium, he's bringing it. Holding of an eligible offensive receiver. Number one in defense. Throwing it down to which illegal forward pass across the line of scrimmage. 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, automatic first down. There's the perpetrator, Marcus Hudson, the cornerback. Great catch, though, by yeah. Walker. I'll tell you, and it's a nice job by Allenbach. Buying time just with a little shuffle, and Walker does do a great job of concentrating. The hold, holding occurred right before that where he yanked the back of the jersey. JoJo Walker was not deterred from his route staying with the football and knowing he's going to take a shot. First down and 10, Terps from just inside the 35. Ball 
Brought down to the 32-yard line that time. And they are really starting to lay the smack down on the field. Miguel Scott out of Miami talking it up with his teammates. Dan. You got Chuck Amato out there in the middle of him putting that big chest in there trying to split the double team. Coach Amato benching around, uh, what, 250, 300 oh, these I, days? I don't know. <laughs> I know it's a lot. He's known to get in the weight room amongst his players and uh, throw up some iron. Yeah, Mark, uh, there's energy now. This game started without a lot of energy. Now there's energy, and when you start to hear the pads crack up here in the box, you know that the energy is starting to rise. There's yeah. something on the line, boys. Play. 20 North Carolina State seniors making their final appearance here at Carter Finley Stadium. This is the 10th play coming up of the drive. Under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Hollenbach sacked by Mario Williams at the 38. His 11th sack of the season, his second of the afternoon. He, he, he's just, he's dominating right now. And again, 6'7", 290 pounds in a genetic freak. It's awesome to watch him. Right here is Mario Williams. You're going to see him come. And he's going to come with a power rush, but his feet never stop. Watch his feet. Even though he's throwing moves, his feet never stop. And he just has great closing speed. And when you have your vision on that quarterback, man, it is like a heat-seeking missile coming for the kill. Bam! Down goes Hollenbach. You read a great line about him. If the if Dr. Frankenstein worked for the NFL, this is what he'd come up with. Mario Williams, 6 6 with that strength and speed. Third and 14. Lance Ball runs it between the tackles. Got a good chunk of yardage back down to the 28 yard line. And for more on Mario Williams, let's go down to Rob Stone. Flag. Coach Amato admitted to us that he's already spoken to Mario about having that NFL conversation as in should he leave school early for the next level. They'll talk faction figures, get as much advice as possible. Coach says physically he is ready. But remember, guys, he is still just a 20-year-old true junior. Earlier in the season, ESPN draft expert Mel Kuyper told me Williams was the top defensive end prospect in the land. But today, Mel said, hey, you know, Williams has had games like the Southern Miss one where he was dominant, others where he was quiet. Still, he is projected to be an early to mid first round pick if he decides to come out early. Now that sounds like a bit of a no-brainer, Chris. I'm not sure about you, but uh, Mario Williams, if he is indeed an early to first rounder, then I'll be the junior. You'd think you'd have to go out. Anyway, the penalty on the field will have the ball placed at the 28-yard line. A double personal fouls, and that's just a, a, the, uh, the officials trying to get control of the game. But I, I think the game's fine. I love him cleaning up piles. Both guys are cleaning up piles in there. Dan Ennis now attempting this field goal from 45 yards out. And he is just off to the left. An opportunity falling by the wayside as we go back to the studio with Reese Davis. football weather up there if you can call it that <laughs> that or hockey <laughs> first down and 10 for Marcus Stone from his own 27 yard line hands it off to Andre Brown Brown got a couple that time off the right side Andre Brown really symbolized the resurgent running attack by North Carolina State at 179 yards against Florida State in a 20 to 15 upset victory there and uh, Bobby Bowden Seminole coach had high praise for him afterwards saying I haven't seen a freshman that good in a real long time. I spoke with Dick Morty the running back coach for North Carolina State was also a running back coach and ran across him in my pro days and coach was telling me that this kid is something special. I like the way he leans his shoulders for him. He's always downhill. A little screen pass. 37 it's Andre Brown again so he shows you his receiving skills out of the backfield David Holloway made the tackle for Maryland stopped up about a yard short of the first down at the 37 that accomplishes a couple things one it gets Andre Brown the ball in his hands which he can do damage the other thing it gets stone to complete a pass to get some confidence and a lot of times when you have a young quarterback a lot of coaches will go to the screen or three-step drop just to get him a completion 
to hopefully get him rolling. Marcus Stone, three and one as a starter. This easily the biggest game of his career. On the line, bowl eligibility for the winner. Third down and one. And too many moving parts that time, seemingly, for North Carolina State. Timeout. North Carolina State. Wolfpack called timeout. Called by the head coach. We're going to stay right here and let you know that, folks, ABC Sports has a great lineup. Regional college football action, 3.30 Eastern time. You'll see either Virginia, Miami, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Bedlam, and South Florida against UConn at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific. Notre Dame's at Stanford, and Georgia, number 13, is at Georgia Tech. Check the local listings for the game in your area. And uh, getting back to Miami against Virginia, boy, what, a, what a surprise last week. Huh? Or was it that much of a surprise? Uh, Georgia Tech's a good football team. Uh, Reggie Ball is a good player. He's uh, up and down, inconsistent, but Georgia Tech always will play defense. They had defensive coordinator down there, John Tenuta is one of the best in college football, and they were ready to play. And any time you can go into a corner stadium, with that much on the line and come away with a victory. That's a season maker. As we take a look at the standings in the Coastal Division. Virginia Tech won last week. We got a good look at them. And Miami losing against Georgia Tech. So uh, Virginia Tech with an opportunity to play against Florida State in that ACC championship game. They play later tonight against North Carolina at 745 Eastern. That game on ESPN. Strange things known to happen late in the season, just when everyone was counting out Virginia Tech and their opportunity to play in a BCS game. I had on. Get something handed to yeah, them. Yeah, you can't count them out, Mark. The way they play special teams defense yeah. and the way they run the football and the efficiency of Marcus Vick is what I like about him as a quarterback. Third down and one. Stopped up short of the first down at the 36-yard line is Andre Brown. Dequel Jackson and David Holloway making the stop, putting a punctuation mark on the end of the first period for Ralph Friesian and for his counterpart, both hoping to go to a bowl game. Welcome back, everyone, for the beginning of the second period. North Carolina State leading 3 to nothing. Matt Hollenbach getting set to come back on offense for the Maryland team. And John Duraney with his second punt of the afternoon from his own 26, and he shanks it. Not a great punt. It'll be down at about the 39-yard line. Good starting field position for Maryland's drive. Let's take a look at our Napa game track. Some of the cogent points of the game so far. This was an earlier punt by Duraney, which was fumbled by JoJo Walker right there. And that led to a short scoring drive. Capped by this John Duraney field goal of 38 yards out. That's where we stand right now. North Carolina State leading three to nothing. Both teams coming in at five and five. The winner of this one becomes bowl eligible. And the ACC has been very active in negotiating some deals for its conference with some contingencies and bowl tie-ins. Here's a look at the numbers of the first period. North Carolina State leading where it counts, three to nothing. Allenbach back to pass. Complete at the 41 yard line to Jason Good. And for more on the bowl tie ins with the ACC, let's go down to Rob. Well, Mark, today's winner becomes the eighth bowl eligible team from the ACC. That's the good news, but the bad news the conference has only six postseason contracts in place for this year. Knowing that, the ACC went on the offensive this week. They agreed to start a four year contract with the Music City Bowl a year early. So you'll have a Big Ten ACC showdown in Nashville. And additionally, the ACC, which is set to begin a four year agreement with San Francisco's Emerald Bowl next year, struck a deal to send a team to the city by the bay this year if they have an opening as for today's teams representatives from the NPC Com computer bowl and charlotte's monarchy car care bowl are here meanwhile the pass complete that time robbed to the 48 yard line vernon davis the stud tight end making the catch gerald pardon me garland heath making the stop on the play and that's going to be a first down for the terps but uh, yeah getting back to uh, those bowl representatives that are here today They'd like a guy like Vernon Davis to show off. Uh, Vernon Davis is, uh, is a, a definite first-round pick, probably the top tight end prospect in the country, Mark. And one of the things about this offense is that Hollenbach was trying to force the ball to Vernon Davis. Coach Taft said, hey, I'll call plays for Vernon. You just throw the football where you're supposed to throw. That time, that was a play for Vernon Davis. Into the boundary, this is Lance Ball. 
And we go from Hollenbach to holler back to Reese in the stadium. Reese. Man, you talk about disappointing seasons. Tennessee Volunteers. Second down and eight. Hollenbach working out of the shot then. Hands it off the ball. Got around the edge. Has the first down to the 32-yard line. Lance Ball, who's run for 100 yards in four of his last six games coming in. Got a nice chunk there to give him a first down and 10, picking up 14. Well, he, he doesn't have great speed, but what he does have is a little burst. And right here, Ronaldo Moses gets stuck inside. Lance Ball recognizes that, and he constantly runs forward. Look at he's 5'9", 225 pounds, and he's got a lot of power and balance in those legs. But that was Ronaldo Moses. If you have contain, meaning nothing gets out of outside, you can't get nosy and sneak inside. If you do, that's what happens. A big play. First down and 10 from 32. Davis in motion. They give it a ball once again. That time dragged down from behind. Oliver Hoyt lacerating that offensive line, knifing in there to make us tackle. Wow. Yeah, the big O says uh, the big D is not the only middle linebacker in this game. Oliver Hoyt, to me, is very instinctive and a sure tackler. He hits them, they go down. But this, he's a good football player, Mark. You can never tell that he's being slowed down by an ankle injury, too, playing hurt. No, no, he just shoots the gap, and again, he comes untouched. And the reason was he, he was able to shoot the gap was because the guard pool vacated that area, and nobody came off to chip him away. He just shot the gap untouched because of the pulling guard. Second down and 10 now for Maryland. Blitz coming, Hollenbach brought down, but he got it away in time. Steven Tullock from Miami's Killian High School, one of three defenders from that program in South Miami, a very successful program, made the play. You can see him right here, and I, I love what North Carolina State's doing. They're coming after everybody every single play, and Ball's got to be able to block. I mean, Ball just gave him a little push, avoided the contact, and Tullock's coming in for his bullseye shot on Hollenbach. Great job by Hollenbach of feeling the presence of pressure, getting rid of the football as he's going down before his knee hit. That's down for a third down and 10. Great opportunities for those two defensive ends, Williams and Lawson, to bring a little heat. And it off the ball, who slips and falls at the 34-yard line. It'll be fourth down coming up, and uh, they're very much on the fringes of field goal range. Dan Ennis, we're told, has range from around 47 to 49 yards. That's what Coach Friedgen told us earlier this week. So we'll see if he elects to go for the field goal attempt here on fourth down and 12. Ennis missed one earlier this game, and uh, they're going to decide to punt. Well, I like the call about punting the football if you execute for field position. North Carolina State's offense isn't exactly lighting it up. Now, North Carolina State will counter with a safe defense here just to make sure there's no fake. I'll tell you, Ball had a big hole there, too. Oh, he did. And flag down to the field. Right to the snap. Delay game. 36 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Is that by design, Chris? Not by that look. <laughs> <laughs> That's by indigestion, by that look. Now, it, it could be by, probably what happened, Mark, normally happens in that case, because they, they were running people on and off. That tells me it wasn't by design. But what, what happens is that you don't want to burn out, burn a timeout. If you're going to punt the ball, fine, take the penalty. Don't worry about burning the timeout. We're back to the 40 yard line. Podlis in the punt, averaging almost 44 yards per on the season. Going to aim for that corner. He just misses it. There's a flag down at the eight-yard line on that 39-yard effort. Now, this is another ticky-tack penalty. And one that the... The kind that you don't really like. Well, much, huh? uh, no, but, but this isn't going to be on Marcus Hudson. And it's, it, it's a penalty where Marcus Hudson's trying to do his job, but he has to have ball awareness 
understanding that that ball is sailing toward the end zone. So don't give a guy a little push in the back right, like that. North Carolina State with yet another penalty. During the run, during the kick, we have an illegal block in the back, number one of the receiving team. The penalty will be enforced from the end of the play. Four yards, first down and four. First and four, it'd be first and ten, ball on the four yard line. Take one more look, Hudson. No need. Ball awareness, young man. Know where it is. Welcome back, everyone, to Raleigh, North Carolina. ESPN College Football presented by Nokia. Maryland trailing North Carolina State 3 to nothing. The winner of this game becomes bowl eligible with its sixth victory of the season. First down and 10 from the four-yard line. Tony Baker now getting his first rep at running back. And he takes the handoff from Marcus Stone. Stopped up on the play by Milton Harris. Tony Baker, a highly recruited freshman out of high school, 5'10", 228 pounds, so he spells Andre Brown for a little bit. Maryland's defense has struggled against the run all year, and Gary Blackney has his troops playing a run strong today. One of the reasons is that North Carolina State's offense made a transition midway through the season, and they changed quarterbacks. They decided to recommit themselves to running the football as opposed to throwing it all over the place. If the running game looks familiar. It's Mark Trestman, former coordinator of the Miami Dolphins. Second down and eight. Marcus Stone back to pass. And Stone making his way beyond the 10 to the 11-yard line. It'll set up a third down and about two and a half or three to go. Wesley Jefferson making the stop on the play defensively for Maryland. And Marcus Stone has had a lot to do with the resurgence of North Carolina State during the last four games. They've won three of their last four. And there was a point when Chuck Amato's crew was two and four after losing that Wake Forest game. People thought that they were pretty much done and dead. And uh, they decided, as you mentioned, Chris, to recommit themselves to the running attack, change quarterbacks with Marcus Stone to put them in a position today where they can become bowl eligible. Third down coming up. And Stone is sacked back at the five-yard line. A group of tacklers, including Dequell Jackson and Wesley Jefferson. Well, Dequell's coming, and he's coming to get something done. And when you're able to blitz like that and use feet and have a little shake and get off blockers, you can do damage. And an outstanding read and vision by Dequell Jackson. It's kind of like a running back, blitzing linebackers like a running back, running through the hole, finding your way, picking it, and bursting to the goal, which is the guy with the football. As a result, Durant cutting from the shadows of his own goalposts, and they came out for it. JoJo Walker at midfield. Looking for a block, Walker. Ran out to the 39-yard line, a lot of it east-west, brought down by Ernest Jones. A 44-yard punt, 11 on the return. They call him the Quella Monster. Quiet by day, his play making a lot of noise on the field. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Nivea for men, more evolved skin care and Saturn. After North Carolina State's third three and out, Maryland with possession of the football in good starting field position at the 39-yard line. They trail three to nothing. And this a battle between two teams looking for their sixth win of the season to become bowl eligible. First down and 10. Hollenbach out of the shotgun. Lance Ball dragged down a yard behind the line of scrimmage at the 40 by Hoyt and Mario Williams. Now, Head coach Ralph Friesian of Maryland said that during a team meeting this week, he asked every player who'd been to Maryland's bowl game two years ago to stand up. He waited. Only 15 players eventually stood up, and he said that that was kind of sobering to me and really made him realize what's at stake in this ball game and made the players realize what's at stake. They want to get to a bowl game. That is the singular goal today for both these teams. Second down and 11. Down on the near and far side of the field. It's a nice job of hard counting by Coach Friedgen and Hollenbach to get those yards back that you lost. 
Good voice inflection. Ooh. That went against Maryland. Hey, voice inflected his own guys. <laughs> Encroachment. Number 18 in the offense. Lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards. Remains second down. He needs a new voice coach, Chris. I guess that's that might be it. Well, tonight, uh, Marcus Vick, number five, Virginia Tech, taking on North Carolina. If Virginia Tech wins, they play Florida State in the inaugural ACC championship game. That game tonight at 745 Eastern time. The game also available in ESPN high definition. And North Carolina also needs a win to become bowl eligible. Second and 16 for the Terps. Hollenbach had it tipped at the line of scrimmage, but complete at the 43-yard line to Drew Weatherly. Brought down by Stephen Tullock. Got to get all the way down to the 29-yard line for the first down. Maryland going scoreless. You see Mario Williams right here, and he's coming in. And he, he, he knows that if he hits the quarterback up high, that he might get a flag for a late hit. If you go low, Mark, it's never called. And Mario did a good job of not taking out Hollenbach's knees. If he went a little bit harder, Hollenbach might have been laying on the NCS side in the middle of the field. And Mario Williams, that's, that's maturity right there. Not taking a shot against the guy that would cost your team. Third and 13. He coming again. again. Here comes number nine in hot pursuit. Hollenbach with a nice run down to the 27 and close to the first down. It looks like he got it. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. yesterday by Nebraska. 16-yard run by Hollenbach gives him the first down at the 26. Hands it off to Ball, who balls his way down to the uh, 24. Let's take one more look at that uh, nice run by Hollenbach. Well, first of all, he does a great job of running away from Mario. You see Mario right here with a great swim and speed, but Hollenbach starts to pull away from the big fella. And when you think of Hollenbach, you don't think of a running quarterback, but right there, I also think of a smart quarterback knowing where the first down marker was, then going down and going down forward as opposed to the baseball slide where the ball is spotted behind. Good point. That's second and eight. The engineering major stepping to the line of scrimmage. His teammates really rallied around him after the last game last season. Got a player offside. They got a free one, and it's incomplete. Intended for number 18 downfield. Davis, but Manny Lawson came offside. And Lawson, the other half of that bookend combination at the other side of that defensive line. Well, a lot of that happens when you try to jump the count or time up the count off of a snap. Offside, 91 on the defense. Five yards to the line of scrimmage. Remains second down. One of those track guys, Chris, you know, in the starting block. Couldn't yeah. hold it. He is. And <laughs> the thing you have to do is you have to trust your eyes. you, you got to block your ears. It's almost, I used to have a coach that wanted, wanted to put cotton swabs and, and earplugs in all his defensive linemen. He didn't want them to get caught up in the count. He wanted them to focus and look at that football. Second down and three. Ball is the lone team. They put the brakes on him. It appeared as if he had a little room over that left side. He stopped by A.J. Davis. That's an outstanding job of recognition by A.J. Davis. The receiver comes in what they do, a crackback. And the job of the corners, once he sees that receiver disappear inside, he needs to replace the defender that the receiver is blocking on. A.J. Davis saw the receiver go inside. A.J. Davis comes up and plays run support like a corner should play run support. He actually, a corner that wrapped his arms. <laughs> That's beautiful. Third down and two. It's the deepest penetration of the game so far for Maryland offensively. Readily in motion. Hollenbach looking that way. And a nice catch by Weatherly for the first down at the 14-yard line. He was covered by Holloman on the play, but Weatherly, one of those 
guys picking up the slack in the absence of Derek Fenner, who is suspended for this game, makes the catch. And watch Vernon Davis here now. If he wants to be an NFL player, he's got to be able to block. That time he was just able to hold Williams out enough. And Weatherly comes in, nice job of catching the ball, turning his hands to the football. See that? Got the ball with his hands, as opposed to trying to chest it up. First down and 10 from the 13 for Maryland. Four receiver formation. Ball is the lane tailback. And that play blown up early. Stop at the 14. Mario Williams again in on the stop for North Carolina State. You know, well, Steve Dunlap is just, I'm blitzing every play. That's what I'm going to do. And the, the fridge has to recognize, all right, well, if they're going to blitz every play, fine, we'll run the ball on first down. But you've got to be able to exploit the pressure package of North Carolina State by throwing the football. Quick throws uh, would be ideal because they're having a hard time blocking number nine. Plus, you add in all the other guys that are coming with their ears pinned. It's tough duty. Carolina State's red zone defense, the best in the conference. This is where they get stingy. Second down and 11. Hits coming off the edge. And it's incomplete, intended for Vernon Davis. And Stephen Tullock was right in Hollenbach's grill, right in his kitchen. Well, that's the second time they've run where Tullock has come untouched. And so there's got to be an adjustment. And, and I'm sure that the offensive mind trust of Maryland will make that adjustment. But if he lines up outside, he's coming untouched. If I'm Coach Dunlap of North Carolina State, I line him up outside again until they fix it. They haven't fixed it. He's a guy that wears so many different hats defensively, Tullock does. Third down and 11 for Maryland. 3.45 to go in the first half. The Terps haven't scored. Walker with a catch down to the three-yard line, and he's near a first down, tackled by Jimmy Sutton, and it depends on the spot here, but it's going to be extremely close. Well, what happens is, okay, now they don't blitz. Will you give Hollenbach back to read? Time to read the coverage, and he delivers a strike. I would have kept blitzing because that was working. Walker uh, indicating that he thinks that they earned the first down, but that would be the natural reaction, of course, by any player on offense. Well, it's nice to see uh, JoJo come back and make a couple nice plays after fumbling that punt. Well, he got the first down with the reception. And talk about positive influences. His roommate is Dequel Jackson. And you see right here the pressure. They're only bringing four or the, the, the whole game. Dunlap has brought a number of different packages, and you have number nine, Mario Williams, bringing. Tullock coming. They're coming from all angles, all sides, all different players. That last time, Mark only brought four. Maryland was able to protect. And Hollenbach is doing surgery out, surgery out there, just picking them apart when they don't bring more than four. He's adjusted this year by making faster and better decisions. And here he hands it off to Ball, who goes airborne and is stopped up short of the goal line at a one-yard line. Lance Ball. Found out this year that lighter is better in his case. He dropped about 10 pounds from a season ago. Down to 225 at 5'9". Packs a punch. That's Lance Ball. Again, wanting the end zone. Ooh, nice. He got, he got a little footfall right there. Second and goal. A lead iso play. Touchdown, Lance Ball. And the Terps take the lead. Hey, Mark, when you're, when you're defending this play, on the defensive line, those are your bottomers. If you got a bottomer, you better have a topper. Well, Maryland or North Carolina State defensive line did a good job of being bottomers, but the linebackers and defensive backs were no toppers. And so never should have got be able to go over the top after one. He just went over the top the previous play. That gives Maryland, Chris, its first score of the game. And ball with a six rushing touchdown this season. Terps leading 7-3 as we approach the end of the first half. The winner of this game moves on to a bowl game. And Lance Ball just said, hey, you know what? Tower to Lance, ready for takeoff. Back with more after this. Welcome back, and folks, this is your last chance to enter today's code word stadium at 100yardblitz.com for your chance to win a 42-inch television. College football presented by Nokia, Maryland, going up 7-3 on that scoring drive a few moments ago. 11 plays, 
39 yards using up almost six minutes as Lance Ball with an education and elevation he went airborne for the score. This is Blackman on the kickoff return. Stopped up a little over the 20. We go back to the studio and Reese. Guys, look forward to hearing from you at halftime. Busy weekend coming up in college football. Marcus Stone now one of five passing after that incompletion. Mac Frost batted it down, and it almost hit him between the numbers, Chris. Yeah, Mac Frost recognizing screen, getting his hands up on a three-step drop. It's a good job. You're going to see Frost up here, number 91. Plays the cut block nicely with his hands. Three-step drop. Great job of getting his hands up, recognition and blocking the throwing lane. All the talk so far is centered around the pressure of North Carolina State's defense. Maryland's defense has turned it up on the last four possessions. Second down and 10. Stone fires incomplete at the 30-yard line. It was intended for Lamar Barrett. And for more on Stone, let's go to our Rob Stone. Yeah, it has been slow start Stone for Marcus since taking over the quarterback spot. He's 3-1 and one as a starter, but in all three of those victories, he has had only one completion at halftime. The staff has tried to open up games running it, some games throwing it. Nothing has changed it. The low number, not all his fault. There's obviously been a lot of drops as well. Coaches have agreed to bite the bullet and work through his early struggles. It's been so bad, halftime locker room. Coaches don't even bark at him. They just make jokes about it. And they put it on the ground that time, Rob. They were lucky to get it back at the 23-yard line. Very shaky and let me offer, approach so far. Yeah, let me offer something here now. Marcus Stone's a quarterback of the future. Everybody in this stadium realizes it. Jay Davis, who completes 60% of his passes this year, is sitting on the bench. It's Jay Davis' senior year. You have no offense. You have nothing going. You can't run the football. It might be time to let Jay come in his senior year, save the, save the team, to go to the bowl his senior day and be the hero. It's about right now, and we're going to take a timeout and be right back in 60 seconds. Stick around. North Carolina State in a familiar position, all too familiar in this game, with just 40 yards of offense so far. Make that 30 total yards of offense so far on 4th and 12 to Rainey Punts. And JoJo Walker back at the 41. Walker will be brought down and piled up at the 42-yard line. Once again, good field position here for Maryland with a 73 lead. The winner of this ball game, once again, folks, becomes bowl eligible. Both teams coming in at five and five, and Chuck Amato's team uh, looking to hold the fort here and get into the locker room at halftime and get some semblance of offensive game planning going. Talked about their anemic performance so far on that side of the ball. Meanwhile, Maryland has found its offensive groove a little bit. And Mario Merrill's coming in now at tailback for Lance Ball, giving him a breather. First and 10 from the 43. Merrill's gashing the defense. There's a flag down at midfield. Merrill's pushed out of bounds at the 19-yard line. A good block up front by Ryan McDonald, but it may have been a little too good with a hold, a 39-yard pickup, but it's going to come back. Yeah, I don't, do not think that he even needed to hold because Merrill's was long past him, and he's just holding on. I mean, that's where you got to go ahead and let him go. You missed your block, yet Merrill's hit the hole so fast and the hole was so big. Holding 68 of the offense during the run. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Remains first down. Well, that one's going to come back. And Mario Merrill's was the number one tailback at the start of yeah. the year, Chris. What? Yeah, he is. He, he can go, too. What? There's McDonald right there. Hands are inside. And, and I, I, that's a darn good block, if you ask me, because his hands are, although they're up, sorry. His hand was outside up on that shoulder pad on Tank. If his hand wasn't on Tank's shoulder, he would have been able to get a good block. He's got to put those hands inside. First and 13. 
The blitz coming. Jailbreak screen complete. That's Melendez, and Melendez takes it across midfield down to the 43-yard line. He gets the first down for Maryland, trying to move into good field position, scoring position, with 1.46 to go now in the first half of play. And remember, North Carolina State has yet to win an ACC game at home this year. A 17-yard pickup. Hollenbach out of the shotgun. Davis made the catch in heavy traffic down to the 22-yard line. That's why he's an All-American candidate. Ron Morgan made the stop. One is, is, first of all, he's got the body of a tight end, an NFL tight end. Secondly, the ability to jump and keep focused, knowing that you're going to get hit and bring the ball down with your hands. Plus, he can line up receiver, which he's doing now. Picked up 22 yards. Holland back with a hot hand right now into the end zone. And it's incomplete. Once again, intended for Melendez. But let's take one more look at Vernon Davis. A physical freak of sorts. Well, first, watch the release right there. You see the little swim and the shake beating the defensive back off the football, understanding the safety is going to come over and take get a hit, but going up and catching the ball and securing it with two hands. Really uh, an outstanding player. Missed a threat down the field. Made a play this year against Clemson where he literally dragged five Clemson players for about 10 yards before he was finally brought down. Second and ten. A nice hit on Merrill's by Mario Williams. Williams bringing some noise with 116, 117 to go in the first half. Well, Mario Williams is bringing his A game today. And you're going to see him beat right there. Nice inside move. And the agility to adjust straight down the line. Watch as he recognizes run and that quick little step. And he's so long and linear, Mark, that he covers such ground that when he lays out, he's already across the line of scrimmage or across the ball. Putting up some good numbers today. Three sacks, two sacks, three tackles, a quarterback hurry, and uh, Manny Lawson at the other end doing a nice job as well, setting up a third down and 10 for Maryland. Yeah, but even more so, he's just a, he's a disruptive force that an offense has to account for where he's lined up every single time because of the potential of a big play that he brings to that defense. He's a great player. And I, I, mean, I watched him when he was a freshman now. And he's come so long and so far, and he was a true starter as a freshman down here at NC State. You look at his, uh, his body at 6'7", uh, 290 pounds. He's pretty well spread out over that 6'7 frame. And at the other end, uh, Lawson, 6'6", 250. Third down and 10. They've only given up seven points so far in the game. The problem with the pack has been their anemic offense. Well, and, and that's, you know, that's an argument that, again, Chuck Amato is going to make the decisions of this football team. But I don't think you're, you're, you're messing around with Stone's confidence. If you go ahead and decide to make the switch. Would you yank it for Davis right yeah, now? I would. I would. I would give my guys a chance to win the football game right now. Marcus Stone isn't giving us a chance to win the football game. That would be the argument that I would make. And Marcus would be back next year. Quarterback of the moment right now, Hollenbach. Work out of the snap. shotgun. Delay game by the offense. One no penalty. Remains third down. How does that happen coming out of a timeout? That's an egregious error right there by Maryland. Coming out of a timeout, you've got all day to talk about what you want to do and then to suffer a delay of game penalty. Let's go downstairs to Rob Stone for more. Guys, Maryland complaining that they were calling for a timeout. Ralph Regan was barking several of his staff members to the linesman here on the sideline. They didn't hear it in time. Well, there's your explanation. Third down and 15. Allenbach has time and overshot JoJo Walker who was closely covered by Jimmy Sutton on the play. Fourth down coming up. And in comes the field goal unit led by Dan Ennis. Well, the North Carolina State defense is keeping this Wolfpack team in the football game, um, stuffing out at least a field goal attempt. And it's been played on this side of the 50, North Carolina State's side of the 50 the whole first half. And for the most part, they've responded. Ennis can attempt this field goal from about 44 yards out. He's going to pull this one to the left with 109 to go in the first half. Another opportunity goes wide. He missed earlier today from 44 yards out. 
So he's 0 for 2 on the day. This from a young man that, as a high school senior, went through the trouble of making up a video of himself kicking the football, came here as a walk on, eventually earned a scholarship. Well, oh. now we'll put that on America's Funniest yeah, Home Videos. Yeah, yeah. Nothing funny about this miss, though. No, and it looks like everything was, the hold was good, the plant foot was good. He just, he just pulled it. A lot of leg on it. And Fritch gave him a little uh, little talking to on the sidelines. Plus, he gave him the fish eye. It's no good when a coach gives you the fish What's eye. What's that? It's just that, that one eye. The, the fish eye. <laughs> it's not good. Eye. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> First down and 10. Andre Brown running between the tackles out to the 28-yard line as we approach a minute to go here in the first half. All right, you, you, you have one timeout left, and you're running the football. you got a minute eight. You're at home. There's no confidence, no confidence in throwing the football. And Maryland's taking advantage of that, Mark. Maryland's calling a timeout now. They're realizing that North Carolina State is trying to run the clock out. Well, uh, North Carolina State with one timeout remaining, and uh, Maryland out of timeouts. The winner of this game becomes bowl eligible, will go to a bowl game. And uh, one of the things that really jumps out at you so far, as we mentioned, the ineptitude of the offense of North Carolina State. How much of that, Chris, though, is defensively what Maryland's defense is doing? We talked a lot about yeah, the pack well, defense. Well, Gary Blackney's a good off defensive coordinator, and what they're doing is they're knowing that North Carolina State is trying to stuff the ball down their throat. So he's putting his players in position to stop the run, daring North Carolina State to throw the football. But if you can't throw it, it's going to be tough to run it. In today's day and age of college football, you've got to be able to run the throw as opposed to, uh, or you've got to be able to throw the run. Used to be the other way around. Yeah. This yeah. is Andre Brown picking up a few. Dequel Jackson making the stop on the play. Jackson, as we mentioned moments ago, a finalist, one of three, for the Benaric Award as the National Defensive Player of the Year. Experts say that he might have been a first round pick a season ago, but decided to come back for his senior year to improve his draft status and uh, might have heard it. Yeah, you think so? Let's look at some telling numbers offensively 37 yards total for North Carolina State. Third down and three. He's not up out of the eye. And Brown. Falls forward to the 36 and a chorus of boos, a smattering of boos, raining down here at Carter Finley Stadium. Chuck Amato's team trailing 7 to 3 as we head into the locker rooms at halftime. Andre Brown has not broken out yet, and let's go downstairs to Rob with Coach Friedgen. Well, Coach, how does your offense? need to respond in the second half dealing with North Carolina State's pressure and blitzing? Well, we've got to do a better job of our pass pickups. Um, we've missed a few assignments, and uh, we've gotten beat. they got some two, some really good players, too. But, uh, you know, we got to make some field goals when we get the chance, too. I, th I thought we've uh, played pretty good the first half. we got to come out and continue to do that. At the end of that last drive, you had a quick conversation with your quarterback, Sam Hollenbach. Yeah, what did you tell him? the clock run down. I mean, we told him that the clock was running when we left the huddle. So, Coach, appreciate your time. Both teams come in at 5-5. Five and five. One more win, and one of them will become bowl eligible. It's an important offensive series for NC State to get these fans involved in to at least get a first down. This is Blackman. Blackman can be stopped up right at the 20-yard line. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman. We just heard from Rob Stone down to the field. And Chris, are you surprised by the seeming lack of urgency for both these teams or is it a lack of execution only well i think it's a lack of execution on the offensive side of the football but defensively you're seeing some darn good football and with coach amato i think he's right in starting stone the second half but I'm, I'm, there's a lot on the line here you have a senior that can throw the football he's had success here throwing the football if he continues to struggle then you got to make the change first and 10 from the 20 yard line brown in the backfield taking the toss for the wolf pass and chopped down on the corner nicely by Milton Harris, the starting strong safety, really one of the great surprise stories this year defensively for Maryland. He made the stop on the play after a gain of almost one yard. They're trying to run the football so they can throw the football, and it's not going to work. Uh, Gary Blackney is not going to fall into that trap. He's going to continue to put more hats up there than North Carolina State can block, and until they throw the ball down the field with a little bit of success, Running's going to be tough, and Coach Blackney was my defensive coordinator at Ohio State. I, he knows what he's doing now. Second down and nine. Stone swarmed and sacked back at the 13-yard line. 
Dequel Jackson leading the charge that time as we take a look at our Napa game track. Some of the cogent points of the game so far. Mario Williams, a big factor up front, number nine, with some impressive numbers. Putting a lot of pressure, leading that front. Meanwhile, Lance Ball has run the ball fairly well for Maryland. Total of 45 yards, and the game's only touchdown so far. This was Lance Ball going airborne for the score in the second quarter. That's when Maryland took the 7-3 lead. Third down and 17 on this, the opening drive of the third quarter for NC State. That's a second completion of the ball game. That one went to Tremaine Hall, but there's a flag down to the play. Let's see if it stands. The flag is at the 27-yard line, and Marcus Stone, if it stands, will have his second completion, and it's against the defense of Maryland. Well, uh, this is one time where I thought maybe Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator, just like Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator from North Carolina State, you're having success getting to the quarterback Holy. by blitzing. defense. Pounds decline. Play will result in the first down. And that time they only rushed three, gave Stone time to look at it and throw the ball. Let's take a look with that at our Intel first half statistics. Right there, one, one first down. Put a lot of pressure on your defense. Giacomato didn't seem too alarmed by that. Guy. Baker in a tailback. Instead, the pass goes to the tight end, T.J. Williams. And a flag comes late on the play. That's going to be a personal foul. Hit coming just a little bit late. T.J. Williams is a, is a guy that's a big factor in this offense. In fact, the leading receiver, rarely do you see two teams playing where the tight ends are leading receivers for both teams. Wesley Jefferson, number 35 from Maryland, came in there, Chris, just a little bit late. Jefferson mm -hmm. filling in for Kershaw, who's suspended for the game. Ah, wow, double. Wow. Two of them. Now, in order to get the unsportsmanlike conduct, somebody must have said something. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 38 of the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, on my first down. We then have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike, number 52 of the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. They may have misidentified the number. I think it was Wesley Jefferson, number 35, actually, who was in on the play. Right there's the hit. He's out of bounds. Mm. Yeah, he's out of bounds, but, you know, that's football. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, all right, he's out of bounds. I, I'll go with that one on the defense. <laughs> now then, uh, Dequel Jackson must have said something to an official to uh, cause that stir. Another 15-yarder. Yeah, they march it all the way down to the 31. First down and 10. Stone completes the pass of the 27-yard line to his tight end, number 80, T.J. Williams. Williams comes into this ballgame as the team's leading receiver. And here comes Dequell coming in. That's very uncharacteristic of him. He is one of the leaders of that defensive unit for Maryland. You've got to be able to keep your composure. If you're the leader, keep your composure. I know you're sticking up for your guys. Second down and six now for Marcus Stone. A blitz coming by the Turks. Into the end zone. Lots of contact. No flag on the play. Incomplete intended for Barrett, who was working against the cornerback, Josh Wilson. Josh Wilson does a great job of body position. And this is something that corners learn all the time. It's the look and lean method. It allows you to get contact on a wide receiver and not using your hands, but you can still bump the guy around if you look and lean into him when the ball's in the air. Excellent Third position down. by Josh Wilson. Maryland brought the pressure that time, and when you bring pressure on Marcus Stone, that's when he struggles. If you rush three or four, he has some chance and some ability to deliver the football. Sets up a third down and six now. This is North Carolina State's opening possession of the half. Stone under heat, and he's sacked back at the 35-yard line by David Holloway. That's where he gets in trouble, Mark, where he gets fixed, fixated on the blitzers coming. He does not keep his eyes downfield, and he does not move around in the pocket to buy himself some time. Look, his eyes are looking one place, and one place only, and 54 happens to be right in his place he's looking, and he doesn't move his feet. 
to try to adjust to find himself a throwing lane. From the All the way. Good job of staying high, not going for any fakes, and finishing the way he should finish. That's the fourth sack of the afternoon for that Terrapin defense. And Coach Blackney just uh, read my mind saying, you're right, Chris. I, I'm not going to sit back and just rush three. I'm going to bring people. Trying to field goal. They're waiting for the kicker. Goal. Boy, you talk about mass confusion there on that pack sideline. By the offense. By the yards. Repeat fourth down. They're going to move it back on the penalty. Now the punt unit comes in. A punt from their own 45 yard line as a result. On fourth down and 20 coming up. Not able to take advantage of the 30 yard penalty that Maryland received on a defensive side of the ball. Durena. Neither punter able to hit the coffin corner today. They've lost six straight at home in the ACC. Will that streak come to an end? We'll find out more when we come back. Look at the statue of the Wolf outside Carter Finley Stadium. That Wolf not howling much after that mix up on the sidelines a few moments ago on behalf of NC State. First and 10 coming back the other way now for the Turks. They lead 7 to 3. The winner of this game becomes bowl eligible with its sixth win of the season. Goes to Lance Ball, who's back in the ball game. Brought down at the line of scrimmage at the 20. Let's take one more look, Chris, at what transpired moments ago. The holder kneels down. Oh. Lamar Barrett, and there is nobody there. Well, that's on Duraney. Duraney's either he's the punter or the kicker. You have the whole field goal team out there. You have 10 guys on the same page, and you got your punter and kicker somewhere, nowhere to be fouled. And then they changed their mind to go for with the penalty. Then they had to go punt the ball. They had a chance. They took points off the board. They had a chance to put points on the board. Second and ten. Hollenbach got rid of it. Was he down first? They're going to rule this incomplete. Pat Lowry. With the pressure on the play. Well, we're getting an education on pressure defense. Pat Lowry's coming. We'll see if his knee is down. He's down. Now they might want to review that. Somebody should call that one down. There, there go. you go. Call it down because he is down. Where's the replay booth? Nope. We're going to let this one go. Third down and 10 coming up for Maryland. Little stunt up front. And they get to Hollenbach again, and he tried to throw it again, but to no avail. And a late flag comes. Tank Tyler that time. The big variable up front for NC State. That's going to be grounding against Hollenbach. Well, he might have been down before he threw that football. Then that would negate the penalty. You see Big Tank coming in here, getting a shot at a sack. And his knee's his down. Knee before, yeah. Now they might want to call that one back. Somebody's got to call the replay if you have a chance. Get down. And he throws it. That's two. They missed two in a row. Now, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Adam Podlich now going to punt in the shadows of his own goalpost. But if you're going to have replay, use the replay. NC State very good at coming after punts. One of the most proficient in the nation at doing this since 2000. They can block some. They bring some pressure. Podlich gets off a high spiral. Tremaine Hall back near midfield. He loses one tackle. But Hall... Dancing east-west rather than north-south brought down to the 49-yard line, but still Waiting for Marcus Stone to get this offense on track for NC State who trails by four when we return ESPN's college football brought to you by Intel Centrino for incredible entertainment in your lap get Intel Centrino in your laptop and Nissan who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. Welcome back, everyone. College football presented by Nokia. Maryland leading 7-3. North Carolina State looking at first down and 10 from their own 49-yard line. 
Nine rushing yards in all in the second quarter. That's it. Stone back to pass off the fake. And Marcus Stone can be stopped about a yard short of the line of scrimmage. But Chris, look at the bright spot. Nine yards in the second quarter. That's 315 Start inches. The keeper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and right there you see Mark Trustman. There's Jay Davis who's Stop handled the demotion the way a class kid would handle the demotion, doing everything he can to help Marcus Stone. But I, I really might think about taking off the parka and warming up uh, just to get something going. And there's nothing against Marcus. Marcus is going to be the quarterback here, but you want to give your kids the best opportunity to win. If you have nothing going, give the kid a shot. Second down and 10. Stone the man for now. Completes the pass to Tremaine Hall at the 42. Looks like to be about a yard short of the first down mark. It'll be a third down and about one to go for North Carolina State. And you talk about the, the competition between he and Davis, Stone and Davis. It's a, characterized as a friendly competition. In fact, last year when Marcus Stone and his father were vacationing in Florida, who did he invite to join him? Jay Davis. I hope they played some catch. <laughs> a little seven on seven. Just one, and again, this will come as he get, the more reps he gets and the better he gets, Mark. Whenever he feels pressure, good quarterbacks, when they're running around back there in the pocket and scrambling, keep their eyes down the field to look for people to come open. Marcus's eyes drop and look at the oncoming defenders. you got to perif and see everything. And that's one thing that will develop with time. You know, even when Stone has enjoyed success today, it's been a rough going of sorts. Whoop, whoop. A knee brace might have gave out a little bit. Uh, good recovery, though. I didn't see it. Good save. Give him an eight and a half on the landing. Third down in inches. Well, this is a massive offensive line of North Carolina State. And this is a battle that they got to win. And the one thing I always talk about, low man wins. Whoever has pad level, stop penetration. They're coming together with good chemistry in the last four games. They'll run the lead iso play. And... Tony Baker gets the first down, the freshman, but there's a flag down on the near side of the field, so hold on one minute. Put Dre Moore in there at, at blocking fullback, big defensive tackle for North Carolina State. Jackson made the stop on the play. Offside, number 40 of the defense. Five yard penalty for the line of scrimmage. First down. Off region with a look of dismay on the sidelines. You know, his first three teams won 31 games and played in three New Year's Day Bowl games since that time. His teams have gone 10 and 11. There's been a precipitous drop off, but a win today would put them back in the bowl picture and get the program back on track. First down and 10 for North Carolina State. Hill in motion. Brown. Brown is brought down after a gain of about two yards on the play by Dequel Jackson. That's a nice job of scheme by freeing Dequel Jackson up is what they'll do is they'll blitz somebody through the hole, the pulling guard, the guy that's responsible for Dequel. See the blitz coming right there? That's Hamilton coming through and Dequel's untouched and he'll run him down. Dequel can get out and go and be a, he's a football player. He's a darn good linebacker from what I watched today. But that's a good job of scheming for, from Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator, to free up his guy. That's his guy. Go get him. Second down and eight. Tremaine Hall in motion to the top of your screen. Quick three-step drop. Fires a dart complete to Brian Clark. That's his first reception of the ball game. And it's good for a North Carolina State first down at the 26-yard line. The senior from Tampa playing his last home game with a big catch. That's a better job of Marcus sticking in there in the pocket, not panicking. Setting his feet and delivering a strike on the slant, but they're keeping it easy for him. Mark Tressman knows what he's doing. He understands quarterbacks. He can coach him. And he's not giving Marcus Stone a lot of things to do, a lot of quick throws, three-step drops, to also negate some of the pressure that Gary Blackney keeps bringing. First down and 10, North Carolina State. Stone with the fake. Into the end zone. Incomplete. Jermaine Hall saying that he made the catch, but it's ruled incomplete. Jermaine Hall laid way out to try and get that. He was 
see right here Tremaine Hall going to try to get it. He's got the ball. What? Well, wait. Mm. Mm, that's a little closer than it first. Yeah, appeared. I think I think it's rolled on the ground right there. He had it and just the momentum knocked the ball loose. But I'll tell you what a great effort by the senior. His last stand here in Carter Finley Stadium. Great effort. Second down and ten. You hear the roar of the fans who just saw it on the monitor here at the stadium. They set up the screen pass. This is Andre Brown. Brown all the way down to the 12 yard line and a first down for North Carolina State. We go back to the studio. First and ten, Tony Baker now in a tailback for North Carolina State. This is Baker. Stopped at the ten-yard line by Milton Harris, the starting strong safety. Take a look at some uh, pertinent numbers. And Stone trying to turn it around here in the second half. We heard Chuck Amato tell our Ron Stone that uh, one, one pass in the first half. Hey, that's his number. So I guess he was telling us that We've got them right where they want them right now. Uh, he knows his guy, and uh, I'll tell you, if Marcus can get it together, they have some weapons on this offensive football team. If we can put it together for two halves, it'd be a pretty potent offense. Spent a year and a half as a backup. Stone into the end zone. Incomplete. Tipped away nicely on the corner. Christian Varner, the free safety, came over. And now there's a flag down on the near side of the field. It was intended for T.J. Williams. Leg. Late laundry. Didn't initially see that. Reminiscent of uh, Ohio State Miami a few years ago, Chris. That defense. was a blatant interference. Appeared as if the uh, umpire may have had a little trouble putting it out of his back pocket. Well, first of all, let's see if this is an interference. That's a good job. Nice center field speed turn. Oh, he had the arm around him and back. Warner had the arm yeah, around him yeah. back, the left arm, Chris. If he would have been able to control it because he's making the play with his right arm, just hold your left arm back. Good call. First and goal. Baker is the deep back out of the eye. Baker stopped up short of the end zone. About a foot Tony shot. Baker, 42, Tony Baker's a 5'10 freshman Down giving Andre Brown a breather. And now a flag, flag. Another flag. A late flag comes out of the pond. That always tells me that emotions are really starting to boil. When it comes late, somebody either did something or said something. Well, this is part of, you know, this is, uh, if it's against Maryland, this is very unlike a Ralph Friedgen coach football team. Dead ball. Dead ball. Personal foul. Personal foul. Number 54 in the defense. Last is going to go. On the back, first down. That's David Holloway. Ralph Friedgen can't like that. No, I mean, that's a couple of personal fouls and dead ball fouls that have been called against his Maryland Terps football team. And again, there's, there's smart, aggressive plays and there's silly, aggressive plays. That's 11 penalties against Maryland. Usually it's North Carolina State that has more penalties. We've got another whistle down to the field. Yeah, but Maryland has been penalized 11 times. For 74 yards today. North Carolina State just five for 39. As a player, you have to recognize how the officials are calling the game. And this particular officiating crew is, is calling tight. And so you have to recognize that as a player. There's a correction on the penalty. It's a dead ball on Sportsman Mike on number 54. That does not result in the automatic first down. It'll be second down. Let's take one more look at it. On the right side. The ref gave him a little push. Ref, ref's dressing him up. From the one, Baker stopped up short again. 
And it'll be third down and short coming up for North Car pardon me, for uh, North Carolina State. Well, they, they're lucky to get the ball back where they had in the line of scrimmage. North Maryland sells out with the blitz off the corner. And the player flying in there didn't do a good job of putting his head in front of the ball. Baker just ran through the tackle. Andre Brown has been the guy for most of the game, but right now it is Tony Baker show a tailback. Brown is the bigger of the two tailbacks. Ten play of the drive. Four. And they didn't make it. Penetration. No signal yet, and they're going to spot it short of the end zone, which will bring up a fourth down now for North Carolina State. And Chuck Amato faced with a huge decision with 5-12 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, that's penetration on, on Maryland's defensive line of getting not only getting lower than their guys, but getting penetrations low. Watch the white helmet sneak out there in the backfield. See white helmets popping out there? That's penetration. Anytime you get that kind of penetration, knock the feet out of Marcus Stone, then have your toppers come over the top. Excellent goal line defense. All right. Fourth down, they're going to go for it. One of the definitive plays of the drive of the game coming up. Yeah, this is a Wolf or a Kitty Cat. Which one are you going to be? Stand up and choose. Baker over oh, the top and touchdown. Touchdown, Pat. The topper was a tad late. If the topper would have been a little earlier, they were able to knock the jumper. There's the ball. Touchdown. He's in. Yeah, that's a great no call. There. There's a good call, a good recognition. Jefferson was a little late on becoming the topper. And Baker takes it in. Rainey in for the extra point. During that little break, Baker looked over the sideline, motioned to Amato to go over the top. He was signaling, Coach, I want to fly. I got wings. I'm ready to go. And here it's Tony Baker putting North Carolina State into the lead, 10-7, with an education and elevation. We'll be back with more right after this. During the last commercial break, quarterback Marcus Stone, his voice intoning passionately to his teammates to get this party started. But right now, it's time for North Carolina State to punt as we get ready here fourth quarter. Maryland came after Duraney a little bit. Walker calls for the fair catch at the 15-yard line as we take a look at our Napa game track. For the Brain Trust, the game plan was very simple coming in. For Chuck Amato and Ralph Region, it was win and we go to a bowl. Lose and the season's over. Lance Ball with a big early going uh, first quarter, 17 carries, product, and a touchdown, and then Tony Baker with his sixth touchdown of the season to give North Carolina State the lead. That's where we stand right now, 10 to seven. First down and 10 for the Maryland Terrapins at their own 15-yard line. State has flipped the switch here in the second half, possession-wise. It's a nice run that time by Lance Ball. Knocked out of bounds by Heath. We talk about Ball, and Coach Friedman said he doesn't have great speed, but he does have the burst. He's a natural runner, Mark. Natural runners play faster than the clock time. That time, Lance Ball showed he does have the ability to get the outside. Now, he's not going to go 80 on you, but he's going to go 20 on you. First down and 10. Evan Smith was kind of like that. Not great speed, but a bit of a burst, huh? Great burst, great vision. Balance. 20 yard pickup that time. Pass complete to Vernon Davis. And Davis will not go down without a fight. That is typical Vernon Davis out near midfield. If you remember the play against Clemson, it took five Tiger players to bring him down. They didn't tackle him until one of them dragged on one of his dreadlocks coming out the back of his helmet. Yeah, well, he's a thick lower body kid, too, so he, when you hit him, he, you kind of just bounce off of him. Right there, Vernon Davis. He, you know, the one thing that I was concerned about right there, I saw the ball flopping around a little bit. You got to be able to protect that ball in traffic when you're coming to get four or five guys hitting you. First down and 10 near midfield. Bach hands it off to Hall. Boy, nice running, good cuts inside by Hall down to the 45-yard line. Didn't really want to compare him to Emmett Smith on that last sequence we were talking about, but I see what you mean with respect to burst and vision. Yeah, and right there was, Mark, as you said, patience and vision, and Emmett was great with patience. 
right there. He was letting the linebacker flow. He waited till the linebacker overflow. Allowed his offensive lineman come to cut off the linebacker, get to him to cut right behind with the burst. Excellent observation, Jonesy. Thank you. He had four 100-yard games in his last six appearances coming in. Second down and five for Maryland. There's ball again. This time brought down after a gain of about one. Oliver Hoyt making the stop on the play. It's Mario Williams. A little bit shaken up, holding his yeah, hand. Holding his thumb there, and that's a digit. You, can go, you know, you can count the number nine. You can play with your digit. It's a big third down, Mario. Take that tough pill, buddy. Get back out on that field. Does a good job of tackling this. Thumb's hurt, but it's third and five, fourth quarter. Could very well be your last game here. Team needs you. Come on. Everybody ready to man up on third and five. Hollenbach under heat. Almost intercepted at the 40-yard line by Stephen Tullock. Good pressure up front by Manny Lawson, who, with Williams out of the game, brought some heat. There he is, Lawson, and you talk about digits being hurt. Manny That's Lawson. Pants up. Yeah, Manny Lawson's going to come on block from the back or inside right there. Try to block McDonald, but they do, and Tullock has a chance to go up and catch it with two hands. And a, Hey, I want to hit that ball. I don't want to catch it. I'm a linebacker. Fourth down and five coming up. Podlesh into punt. He's going to be standing at his own 41. His fifth punt of the afternoon coming up. Jermaine Hall calls for the fair catch at the eight-yard line. North Carolina State 92 yards away. Marcus Stone, 3-1 and one as a starter. The most important game of his career right now. And the competition level has been ratcheted up just a little bit in the last few minutes here in the fourth quarter. First and ten for North Carolina State from their own eight-yard line. Baker taking the handoff and found a gaping hole. They called his name. Baker with the first down out near the 30-yard line for North Carolina State. Dwayne Herndon gets it. Key block on Jefferson right there, Wesley Jefferson. Remember, Wesley Jefferson is filling in for the suspended William Kershaw. Watch, watch Herndon, number 62. See that? He keeps pushing his man past the hole, and Baker makes a cutoff of it, and he's he's got the hot hand. That's why you're seeing Baker now as opposed to Andre Brown. He's got the hot hand. Roll with the hot feet. You got the hot feet. Put him in. Yeah, Chris, I was just asking you during the commercial break, why is Baker in there as opposed to Brown? Well, we just got our answer. You said it. Brown back in the ball game now after that 22-yard scamper. And Drake Brown breaking tackles out to the 34, picked up four yards. It'll be second down and six. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper ACC update. Virginia and Miami at 3.30 Eastern on ABC, pardon me. North Carolina taking on number five, Virginia Tech. That game on ESPN at 7.45 tonight. If Virginia Tech wins, they play Florida State in the inaugural ACC championship game. That is McKeon of North Carolina State, the team's starting left guard down in the field. This is a big series, not only for North Carolina State for obvious reasons, but for Marcus Stone. And why do I say that? Well, Marcus Stone was down there giving an impassionate, impassionate speech to his guys about, let's go. We got a chance to put him away. And right now, his teammates are responding. So his leadership skills are coming out right now and if they respond he's they're going to follow him you know if they don't respond it might be a question yeah. mark you know after his first career win and his first career start against southern mississippi five games ago coach amato gave a speech to the team how pleased he was and then before the team was dismissed stone took the floor and thanked each and every one of his teammates for helping him achieve his first win in his start and after that he kind of won the respect of the guys around him Redshirted as a freshman after throwing for over 5,100 yards and 50 touchdowns in high school. He has ability, Mark. There's no question about that. He just needs reps to see things. Second down and six. Hill in motion. Stone fires complete at the 39. That's Brian Clark with his second catch of the game to get the first down at the 42-yard line. Nice run after reception that time by Brian Clark, who picks up eight. Again, you, uh, Mark Tress, Tressman is continuing 
to take advantage of the three-step drop against the pressure defense of Maryland. And when you have execution, it looks like you're calling a big game. And, and when you don't have execution, you're in trouble. And that's where I think a lot of fans get in trouble is they mistake poor execution for bad play calling. And that's not the case all the time. After a poor first half, Marcus Stone has turned it around here in the second half somewhat. Going up top. And it's picked off. Josh Wilson with the pinch. Got the numbers, too. And looking for a few blocks. Wilson brought down to the 43-yard line, but there's a flag back around the 20. If it stands, it's Maryland's ninth interception this season. A pass intended for Darrell Blackman. A great coverage. Yeah. I know I use, or you hear announcers use the word great. Well, this was the great because he did exactly what he's supposed to do. He looked and leaned, he went up to the highest point and caught the football. It's coming back, unfortunately, for him. His dad, Josh Wilson's dad, Tim Wilson, played at Maryland and was a uh, fullback for the Houston Oilers during the Earl Campbell era. During the return, we have an illegal block in the back by the waist by the return team. Ten yard penalty. First down. Remember Tim Wilson. Watch technique, though. And then Gary Blackman, the defensive coordinator, is the secondary coach. Yeah, look for the ball, lean into the receiver. Look and lean. Look and lean, and go and make a catch on the football. It's an outstanding job of technique, being in control of your body, and making a great catch, which is often difficult for those corners. Before that pick, Stone had completed six in a row. Backs line up out of the eye on first and ten from Maryland, coming back the other way. Hollenbach. Sacked back at the nine-yard line by Mario Williams. Nothing wrong with his fingers. He got a grip on the quarterback. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, Mario. <laughs> you got that tape on there. You're all good now for your third sack. Watch Mario right here. This is why he's the number one pick and probably the best defensive end in the country. It's because of his size. Oh, that Reggie Hump! He hit him with the Reggie Hump. He got him going up one field, took his right arm under the armpit of the offensive line and humped him. You know, not, good Reggie Hump. Reggie White, of course. <laughs> that was the Reggie Hump. Reggie made a special move. That. Yeah, special move. Second and 12. Four receiver set. Allen Bob underneath. Complete. Vernon Davis. You're not going to tackle him strictly with your arms. Davis out to the 25 to get the first down for Maryland. And a fruitless attempt at tackling him by the caller. He picked up 16 yards. Well, Vernon Davis is running away from defensive backs, too. You're trying to play man-to-man -man on Vernon Davis and Tulloch right there. And what Tulloch does wrong is the linebacker, he looks back at the quarterback at first. Running, then you try to arm tackle him like you said, Mark. You can't. He's too much of a load. One of three finalists for the John Matthew Award is one of the nation's top tight ends. First down and 10 for Maryland. A little bit more breathing room. As we approach 10 minutes to go in the ballgame. Little jailbreak screen incomplete. Intended for JoJo Walker. And for more on Davis, let's go back to Rob. Well, we have a flag on the play here too, but several times today we've seen Davis carry a load of tacklers with them. Well, Ralph Regan and the rest of the Maryland staff a little bit worried about it because they're saying the referees sometimes have the slow whistle and guys keep piling on and they're telling Davis, hey, Vernon, you got to recognize when the play is over and just kind of bend those knees and go down. It's tough to take the fight out of the player. Yeah, it's nice to have to. Downfield, number 63, five yards on the line of scrimmage, remains first down. Well, we got to see where this ball is thrown because if the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage and there's no ineligible downfield. Vernon Davis is down there taking a knee right now. Was shaking up. Uh, you know, talk about his uh, his chassis, his frame. Uh, you look at his numbers: five for seventy-five. Let's take one more look at the pass and whether it's behind the line of scrimmage or not. The line, of, line of scrimmage is twenty-five. There's the ball. See, that's behind the line of scrimmage. So I don't. Uh, I in screen passes, I was under the impression that you can go downfield and block on screen passes. I'm pretty confident about that. Either way, it's going to set up a first down and 15. Ten minutes to go. That's the third time that Maryland has gone to that play. The first time was unsuccessful. The second time they were able to get some yards. But the reason why, if you have a defense that can run like North Carolina State, anytime you have a long developing screen pass, 
when you have a defense that can run like the pack, it's not going to be successful. We're going to take a quick timeout and come back. On Vernon Davis leaving the field moments ago under his own power. And Maryland with the ball, courtesy of that interception by that man. Number four, Josh Wilson. First down and 15 from their own 20-yard line after the penalty. Bringing four right here. Right there. And back out of the shotgun. Had a double clutched and got picked. Hudson. Touchdown. A calamitous mistake by Hollenbach. Marcus Hudson turned the beat around. He fought the ball away from the receiver. Well, they're bringing four off the corner. You see Mario Williams come in and disrupt Hollenbach. Hollenbach's vision. In fact, he was able to get a hand on the face mask. Unintentional, of course, and that's Hudson. Fighting for the football, fighting for his opportunity and shot, and taking it to the zone. It was Marcus Hudson that was penalized a couple of times earlier today. That time with some major league atonement for those earlier oh, penalties. Man, his seventh career interception. You see Williams right here getting a great bull rush and getting in the vision of Hollenbach and got the face mask. No call. See, it's a great job of Mario Williams coming now. He's got to be able to let go of that face mask. But getting a hand in there. And that it very easily could have been a call. Missed by the umpire and the referee who are responsible for that call. The pass was intended for Melendez and Hudson. The team's best cover corner made the biggest play of the game arguably so far for North Carolina State. With 9.50 to go in the fourth quarter, the pack on the verge of taking a 10-point lead should they add the extra point. Maryland has won four of the last five against North Carolina State, but in those games... It's been decided in the final minute of regulation or overtime. So plenty of football to go. But Marcus Hudson with a deciding blow moments ago. Great anticipation. Giving the Wolfpack the lead. ESPN's College Football is presented by Nokia. It's more than just a phone. It's your life in there. Nokia. And in part by the Acura MDX with electronic four-wheel drive. And Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. Carter Finley starting to rock a little bit. North Carolina State leading by 10 after that interception return for a touchdown by Marcus Hudson. Here's JoJo Walker trying to answer back. Walker piled up and stopped at the 26-yard line. Big job ahead. Sam Hollenbach, how does he respond after throwing that pick six? And remember, though, the last time here at NC State, Maryland trailed by 14 points midway through the fourth quarter. They scored two touchdowns, missed an extra point on the second one, eventually winning on a 23-yard field goal. They got to give some help in blocking big number nine, Mario Williams, who got an assist on that interception. By getting a hand in the face of Ollenbach. And back working out of the shotgun. A safe handoff to ball with nowhere to go. Presley makes the stop. Let's go back to the studio. Surprisingly a low scoring game then. Ball at the 21 yard line, second down and 14. And in the two turnovers today, it's led to 10 points for North Carolina State. And another sack and a fumble, and another turnover. Mario Presley was there, and the pack has it back. Mario Williams again and just dominating his final game maybe maybe in Carter Finley Stadium 
But again, we talked about we need somebody to give him some help. But when you got a 6'6 guy that can throw a swim and have closing speed on his target like that, you need to give your offensive lineman some help. He's been chewing them up all day. Chris, that wasn't even close. I mean, how do you give some? What can you do to help an offensive tackle? You take tackle? a running back, you line him up on the outside, and you have him go chip the guy to the tackle. If you're leaving that guy after four sacks today, one-on-one, -on -one, you got to make some kind of adjustment because you can't hang. That was like stealing. Right, you can't hang. We're going to review this Result last play. The play is being reviewed. Not sure exactly what is to be examined. I guess we'll find out. But Mario Williams with a great charge, and then Demario Presley was D1 on the fumble recovery. I guess that hand's okay, Chris. Yeah. And watch him come. Now he'll strip with his hand. See that? Now that's a clear fumble. Nothing to review there. There's the big paw coming in in a wig span. The left hand comes around to secure the tackle and knocks the ball out. But this is when I talk about getting linear, the ball is way out before Hollenbach hits the ground. He's so long, Mark, that when he reaches, he just, ex uh, with his wingspan and his length as far as his height, he covers a lot of space. But that's where you have to give Time your lineman. Time for the review. The quarterback fumbled the football. It was recovered by North Carolina State. First down. So you got to think about giving your guy some help. I mean, he's been chewing you up all day. He's drawing straws for those offensive linemen. <laughs> Look at those numbers by Williams. Eight tackles, four sacks, five for loss. That is a stat stuffer. And Hollenbach. Two consecutive turnovers now. The interception for the touchdown and now the fumble. North Carolina State working with a short field from the 16. First down and 10. Baker stopped up behind the line of scrimmage by Trey Covington. And second down and about 12 to go. This Maryland defense has to become stout down here to entertain any further. Turning the beat around. They trail by 10. The winner of this game becomes bowl eligible. Ralph Friedgen's team does not want a repeat of its disappointing season last year when they failed to qualify for a bowl. Second down and 11. That's lining up out of the eye this time. Clark split to the bottom of your screen. Little counter to Baker. And Baker across the 15. The pile moves down to the 13-yard line. Jefferson making the stop for Maryland's defense. Third down coming up. North Carolina State has to make it down to the six. And this is the, the counter play, but it's a counter OB where the off, uh, offensive running back who's in motion comes back and leads through the hole. Baker did a good job of loaning his shoulder on Dequell Jackson. Dequell's got to bring his feet when he makes the tackle. Baker was able to get three extra yards, which for this offense is a lot, Mark, because they go on a short passing game so much, it could be the difference between getting a first down and not getting a first down on this play. We're going third down and seven, Chris. Baker initially hit in the backfield and stopped up short of the 10 yard line. His forward progress going to be marked around the 12, in between the 12 and the 11. It'll be fourth down coming up. Covington once again making the stop on the play, and in comes Duraney to attempt another field goal for North Carolina State. Now it's clear to me that North Carolina State's saying, Our defense is better than your offense, Maryland. We're going to make this a two touchdown game, and they play close to the vest. Very conservative, very conservative on that opportunity. Well, the winner of this one goes to the bowl, and should North Carolina State hang on to win, it would be their first home win in seven tries. He made one earlier from 38, this one coming from 30 yards out. Duraney. And he knocks it right down the highway. It's now 20 to seven with 6.44 to go in the fourth quarter. Let's take a look at our Nokia moment in time. As Chuck Amato takes a peer through those sunglasses that he customarily wears. Big pick that time by Wilson. Josh Wilson with an outstanding picture and a portrait of great defense. Nokia moment in time. 20 to seven with 6.44 to go. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Bielman and Rob Stone down in the field. North Carolina State able to find its mojo a little bit here in the second half. And on the verge, should they hang on to end 
in their losing streak at home here at Carter Finley. Well, that's amazing. Six conference games. Wolves are howling too. <laughs> Feeding time. You hear that in our sleep tonight, yeah. partner. Huh? And that's defense. Defense down there howling. That's the Wolves. I want to know who's going to be the lead wolf. Mario Woman Williams is lead wolf. He's taking control of that pack. Yeah. Dominating. You know what they say, Chris, unless you're the lead dog in a sled dog race, the, the view never changes. The many leaders that have merged today for North Carolina State, Williams among them. Meanwhile, uh, the frustrations written on the faces of the Maryland places across the way. We have to ask with this passing game struggling like it is, how much does Maryland miss suspended player Derek Fenner? Great point. Walker. We come out of the end zone. Run a little reverse. That's Davis, Vernon Davis, the tight end. Put his hat down and makes it out to the 25 as we go back to Reese. Shiano getting things going a little bit at Rutgers. Former defensive coordinator for Larry Coker down at the University of Miami. And there's Big Mario, star of the day so far. He has got his ears pinned back and ready to fly. Hollenbach has a man up top and overshoots his receiver. Incomplete intended for his roommate, Danny Melendez. He had him too. He had him wide open, beating the man-to-man -man coverage. The aggressiveness of Steve Dunlap's defense is not stopping. Melendez, the team's second leading receiver behind Derek Fenner, who's suspended for this game. Uh, sets up a second down and 10 now. It's been a tale of two different halves for Hollenbach. That one interception leading to seven points the other way. Second and ten. That's complete out to the 32-yard line. It's number 17, Danny Akendo. Brought down by Stephen Tullock. And the clock now is a factor in the football game. Maryland has three timeouts left. Going to their hurry-up offense. And they might be in four-down territory now. So it depends on how he calls this. Old Buck can run. Has some time. Complete to Davis. Davis tiptoed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Another first down for Maryland out near midfield. Let's go downstairs to Rob. Well, Jonesy, just a few moments ago, you are talking about the frustration on the Maryland side. Well, Vernon Davis was the picture of frustration after that last Hollenbach fumble. I turned around. All I saw was his helmet whipping across the sideline area. He got in a shouting match with one of his offensive linemen, Andrew Crummy, and had to be settled down by several players and staff members. Interesting to see how his mental focus will be on this drive. Uh, good point, Rob, and uh, he concentrated well enough to make that last catch, picking up 14 yards. I love his competitiveness. Hollenbach downfield and incomplete at the 15 yard line, intended for Weatherly, defending A.J. Davis. We're seeing good corner play on both sides. Again, excellent position. And Hollenbach, what you might want to do now is look to run the football a little bit. You got to get positive yards. to force anything in there but if you have a chance to pick something up with your feet go ahead you got time Maryland's turnovers once again proving to be lethal they had three of them today which have led to 13 points for North Carolina State last week they committed four turnovers in the loss to Boston College second and ten Davis chopped down at midfield after making the catch by Dewan Morgan Clock running with 5.39 to go in the fourth quarter. Representatives from several bowls watching both these teams on the field today from the Meineke Car Care Bowl, the MPC Computers Bowl, the Music City Bowl in Nashville, and the Emerald Bowl in San Francisco. As Maryland calls one of its remaining timeouts. They've got two left. 
North Carolina State with its full complement remaining. Winner of this game goes to a bowl game. They become bowl eligible with their sixth win of the season. Talked about the uh, tie-ins with the ACC, and the Champ Sports Bowl, MPC Computers Bowl, Gaylord Hotels, Music City in Nashville, Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Monarchy Car Care, and Toyota Gator Bowl. Looking forward to the bowl season coming up, partner. We're yeah. going to be broadcasting some 25 college football games and bowl games. That will be an incredible holiday season for all of us on the ESPN family of networks. That's why ESPN is the king of college football, Mark, and it, to bring coverage like we do is it's my privilege to be a part of it. But it's uh, bowl games. People, again, complain that, that, oh, there's so many gold bowl games, but it is a reward for the kids. And even though, like, uh, a new bowl or, or not a well-known bowl, they, it means something to the kids and the fans of that school. It is a genuine reward for these kids to go and play, and, and it, the coaches love it because it gives them extra practice time. It just lets them develop, and it's a, it's a great part of college football with bowl season. Now, if we could just add one championship game to it, <laughs> we'd have it perfect. Third down and six. Huge play coming up for Maryland. And it doesn't work out. Hollenbach sacked by Manny Lawson. All the way back at the 39-yard line. Well, they can't handle the X stunt. For when you have Manny Lawson coming from one side up here, and watch the X stunt right here with Mario Williams coming inside. And beating the center, McDonald. Look how he gets low. He turns that shoulder. You have Lawson and Mario coming in to finish. And those guys have been big-time players. Coming into the game, Mark, they've had 32 tackles for loss between them. And they added to that total today. Hey, Chris, what about this for Lawson? You got Mario Williams there, number nine. But on the other end, the other bookend, Manny Lawson, number 91, an engineering major. As a freshman in 2002, he finished first on the track team in the 60-meter hurdles. As a sophomore, he won the ACC indoor title in the long jump. You talk about some agility and athletic skills. Did I say skills? Reese Davis, what's up? See, starting to roll a little bit, and uh, 529 left here. You know, folks, the ESPN College Football Encyclopedia, the biggest reference guide ever published on the history of college football. Chris, I've got mine at home. Nighttime, sitting down, watch a little TV, open it up. Fight songs, the helmets, the profiles, so many great things now available wherever books are sold. Fourth down and 16. Notice the secondary of North Carolina State. They're lined up right at the chains, their deepest guy, and they will get depth on the snap of the football. Rushing three. They need this to stay alive. Hollenbach. Walker. Oh, oh he caught it at the 29-yard line. JoJo Walker with an outstanding circus catch. Not only the catch mark, but the throw by Hollenbach, who gets a shot as he delivers the football. A 32-yard pickup and a first down. That's toughness right there, knowing that he's going to get one right under the chops. And watch JoJo Walker outleap everybody. Design throw back. It's a deep post. And watch him go into traffic. No, he's going to take a shot. Concentration catch the football. An outstanding play by Maryland. First and 10 from the 29. Trying to mount a comeback underneath incomplete. Daniel Quindo couldn't hang on to it. Stops the clock with 5.07 to go. And Walker with a little JoJo mojo. Look at that. You know, it's a great job of awareness and, and knowing you're going to take your shot. Securing the football with two hands so it doesn't get knocked out on contact. JoJo stepped up today. Yeah, one of three team captains. And uh, Mario Williams, meanwhile, coming off the field for North Carolina State. Manny Lawson staying in there. Lawson has nine and a half sacks this season after that last one. Second down and ten for Maryland. Hollenbach complete underneath. Walker on the move. Pushed out of bounds. Another first down near the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal to go for Maryland. Oregon making the stop with five minutes to go. The Terps hanging in. 
They're doing a great job of fighting, not quitting. It's a Ralph Friedgen coach football team. They're going to keep going till the end. And I, I, a sense of urgency, and they complete that fourth down play. That that builds confidence. That builds excitement to say, it's not over yet. We can do some great things. They've had miraculous comebacks during the last five games in this series. I chronicled that just a few moments ago. The last five games been decided in the last minute of overtime or regulation. Hollenbach, incomplete. Weatherly couldn't squeeze it. And it stops the clock with 4.56 to go. Second and goal coming up. See right there, Vernon Davis is in the ear of Weatherly. Vernon Davis needs to worry about Vernon Davis. There's a good way to lead and a bad way to lead. Weatherly knows he dropped the ball. He doesn't need a reminder. Second down and goal. See what they run this time out. 11 play of the drive coming. Walker's in the slot to the right of Hollenbach. He's been one of his favorite targets. The other direction complete at the six yard line to Isaiah Williams, number 87. It's his first catch of the afternoon. It looks like there's a late flag on the play. Oh, and it's against Maryland. That's a tough one to swallow at this juncture of the game. Let's see who the flag's on. It's an interesting decision. Do you want to make it third down? If you give them second down again, what you do is you give them room to work in the end zone. The field is constricted right now. That is the 14th penalty against Maryland this afternoon. Chuck Amato knows what that feels like. Illegal motion, number 18, turned up field. Five yards to the line of scrimmage. Remain second down. That's Vernon Davis. Well, you're going to see Vernon Davis start upfield right there before the ball would snap. Must have gained ground, and that's, you know, the, the point that I was trying to make when he's in the weather of here. He needs to focus on Vernon Davis and doing his job. Now look at that. Way above their season total. Almost tripling penalty. A second and goal. Ball back at the 15. Blitz off the edge. Touchdown! And he came right back and atoned for that last mistake. Vernon Davis keeping alive the hopes of the Terps. Well, uh, again, the, the target that he presents at the size and the leaping ability. And Hollenbach goes right to him. Look, that's his money man. He's going to go to the guy that he has most confidence in. And all it is is a straight seam pass. And defense back gets caught in his back pedal, but see the hips turn. And Vernon Davis going up for the nice catch. He ran right by Morgan. And this sets up another compelling, intriguing finish in this series. For the last five games between North Carolina State and Maryland have been decided in the last minute of regulation or overtime. We go back, folks, to 2000. Quarterback Sean Ellis's touchdown gave Maryland the win in double overtime. In 2001, it was this play that gave Maryland the win. 2002, Nick Novak hits a 26-yard field goal with 34 seconds left for the win. And in 2003, it's Novak time again, this time from 43 yards out. With 23 seconds remaining, Maryland winning that one, 26 to 24. And you don't think for one minute that some NC State fans are thinking, uh-oh, here we go again. Well, not only the fans, but I, I guarantee you this, that the coaches and the players are thinking that too. I mean, it's not been the most successful year for North Carolina State and Chuck Amato. They haven't won a home game in the conference play all season with 421 to go. Plenty of work ahead for Chuck Amato and Marcus Stone coming on the field soon to lead that offense. Yeah, I'm glad you bring up Marcus Stone. You know, Marcus gave his team a uh, pep talk down on the sidelines before the last series. They ended up uh, throwing an interception, but now he's got to be able to control the clock and get a few first downs and force Maryland to use their last timeout. Maryland with just one timeout remaining. Winner of this game goes to a bowl game. It's that simple. The loser has its season come to an end. North Carolina State? Yeah. Wolfpack calling a timeout. Reason being is they want to make sure that they have an, uh, a, a proper alignment because they don't know if North Carolina or Maryland's thinking onside kick 
or non onside kick. Now, when Chuck Amato's crew does get the ball on offense, Baker's had a hot hand. Brown did well earlier in the game. You've got Tremaine Hall, a veteran receiver, senior. Which direction do you like to go in at this juncture of the game? Well, I'm going to go with Baker. I think Baker does have the hot hand. He's been able to pop a few longer runs. But Marcus Stone, there's going to be a time in the upcoming series where we're going to have to complete a big pass. And Marcus Stone is going to uh, really write a script for his future here as far as leadership goes. Can he make the big play when the big play counts? Unless they come out and just pound him, Mark, but I, I really don't think they'll have that ability because Gary Blackney is going to put Marcus Stone in a position for him to make the play, not let Baker or, or, or Vernon handle it. He was just one of five in the first half, and he's turned the beat around here in the second half. And look at the emotion on the other side of the field. Those Maryland defenders really amped up at this point. Vernon Davis, very loquacious, extremely vocal, very emotional. You know what? He actually came back and showed us something yeah. there, making that play for well, the he, touchdown. He is, and he's got to keep his emotions in check and keep his teammates on his side. Has to hurry and get one of the guys back. That's Blackman. Terrell Blackman returns it out to the 18-yard line. Looked like they were almost expecting a, a trick player, a gadget play of sorts, a short kick perhaps, but instead they'll start off on their own 18. That was a nice move by Ralph Friedgen. What he did was show on side kick. When you do that, you force North Carolina State to line up in a defensive posture, and when you do that, you eliminate any possible threat of a return because nobody's in position to set up the return. Here we go, 4.16 to go in the fourth quarter. First down and 10, Hollenbach did his work. Now we can see if Marcus Stone can counter. Tony Baker is the lone back. And he gets the handoff. He's had the hot hand. Baker, the freshman, over the 25 and tackled after a gain of about seven on the play. It was Tony Baker who motioned over the bench on fourth and goal to go after they'd been stopped three previous times consecutively. said, Coach, give me the ball. I can fly. I'll go airborne and get the touchdown. That's exactly what he did. So the freshman, uh, unafraid, undaunted by the circumstance and the magnitude of this contest. Look, Look at his numbers today, averaging over five per pop. Well, and that's not easy to do because you know that Maryland knows that you're going to try to run the football. And that run right there was a great job by the offensive line of sustaining blocks, and letting Baker hit the cutback lane. Second down and three. Baker keeps those legs turning. Looks like he's going to be stopped up just a little bit short of the first down. Just shy of the 28-yard line. So Trey Covington making the stop. You have a third and short situation now. In comes John Richter. North Carolina State once. They have the bootleg there all day. And this is, it would be a gutsy call by Mark Tressman. But so again, Maryland's got a blitz to stop the one-yard run. If they want to have a little play-action bootleg here, it's there all day. NC State looking for the first down. Maryland looking for the stop. Stone may have been stopped up. Not much of a surge. And Marcus Stone might not have gotten there. We'll it's going to be close. Remember, that line that you see on your screen is an approximation. It is not exact. They are going to bring in the chains and measure here for the first down. Good initial surge by the Turk defensive line. Marcus Stone uh, looking to see if he may have been bloodied on that last play. And Baker tried to give him a little push from the rear side. A la Reggie Bush. Matt Leiner. And just out by that much, by half a football. We'll see initial surge is stopped by Stone. You see Tony Baker or Baker coming in there. And it, you know that if you want to get technical, that's a generally you're not allowed you to do not, that. Not allowed to aid or a better runner. And push him forward. I've never seen it called. It wasn't called in a Notre Dame uh, no. SC game. Push getting liner to hand in the end zone. Here's Stone at quarterback 11 of 14 in the second half. Baker. 
across the 30 to the 32 yard line. North Carolina State with two timeouts remaining. Maryland with a tenuous one timeout remaining. And when does Ralph Region choose to use that? With two minutes to go now in the fourth quarter. And the second down coming up for North Carolina State, about eight to go. The winner of this game will travel to a bowl game. The loser will go home. Second and six. Well, it was a great effort by Marcus Stone. Off to Baker, and Baker hauled down in the backfield at the 29-yard line. They'll lose a bunch on that play. Jefferson, Wesley Jefferson making the tackle. 131 to go. And Maryland burns its final timeout. So it'll be third and long coming up for North Carolina State. Maryland has to hope for a good punt return and work quickly. And North Carolina State may have a little more breathing room if not for a a potentially dangerous and uh, costly mistake here on a third quarter play. They did not have their place kicker out there. John Duraney had their holder out there waiting to kneel and place the ball. But instead they elected to punt after that took them out of field goal range and yeah, potentially the score is 23 14 rather than 20 to 14. Uh, that's the kind of things that do come back and haunt you and they had 10 guys on the same page 10 guys heard field goal team. One guy, the most important guy, the kicker didn't hear it. But the other thing, Mark, even if it was punt team, it was fourth down. I don't know where he was because he also does double duty as right. the punter, and he was nowhere to be found. There we go. Third down coming up. Eight to go for North Carolina State. They've got to get know, close to the 38-yard line, they're calling it. Marcus Stone has had a hot hand here in the second half. And you want to run the football here. You do not want to throw the ball. You want to run the football. Maryland's out of timeouts. Get that clock ticked down as far as you can. 3 to 13 on third down conversions. Put it off to Baker. Couldn't break that many tackles. Stopped short of the 35 at the 34 yard line. And quickly on comes the punt return team from Maryland as the defense proves to be staunch and stout on that last series. 1.15 to go. The clock's still running. The rainy punting today has averaged a little over 36 yards per. He needs to come up with one of his better efforts now. You see Chuck Amato down there talking to the lineman, telling him when he's going to call timeout. You see he's pointing up to the clock. Look at the clock. Don't look at me. Working that gum. There you go. 49 seconds to go. Let's go back to the studio with Reese. Thanks a lot, Reese, and uh, Ralph Region ruminating the next series of plays for his offense when they do get the ball. We talked about a team meeting earlier this week when he asked his players who have gone to the last bowl game to stand up. He saw that only 15 able embodied players stood up, and that was a wake up call for him and the program, the team, the players. They want to get something accomplished here and get back to a bowl game, which they didn't go to last year, but they have just 49 seconds to go. On fourth down, that's JoJo Walker. Did a great job catching the ball today, receiving. Did fumble one earlier today, though. Durrani standing at his own 20-yard line for the pack. Good job by Mar or North Carolina State calling a timeout to set up a play to try to draw Maryland off sides. And it almost worked. Either team with the timeout remaining. 
If you're Maryland, Chris, with 49 seconds to go, do you sell out and come after it totally right here, or do you try and set up a return with JoJo Walker? I think you try to set up the return for the simple fact that in college football, the clock does stop on first downs. So you're able to, to at least move the ball down the field in the middle of the field is still in play. The other thing is they come close a couple times, but they also come close to, to roughing in or running into the kicker, which would carry with it a first down. Either or. I mean, it, it, it depends on how much confidence you have in your offense and how much confidence you have that this kid's going to maybe shank one. Colin Buck trying to break this team out of their losing ways. They've lost three of their last four. Looks like they're coming. Ten men up front. Rainey got it off quickly and got off a great boot down to the 17 for JoJo Walker. And comprehensive coverage of that punt as well. JoJo Walker barely made it to the 25-yard line with 39 seconds to go and Maryland with no timeouts remaining. A 49-yard punt, nine on the return, and quarterback Sam Hollenbach now faced with the daunting task. The huge task of moving his team downfield 75 yards with no timeouts. NC State on the verge of perhaps going to a bowl game and getting their first home conference win of the season. First down and 10. Three man rush by the pack. And it's picked off. Who else? Marcus Hudson putting an exclamation point on the day for the pack. Marcus Hudson does a great job of baiting. Again, they tried to high-low Marcus Hudson. Marcus Hudson knows that they're trying to go over his head. He's a senior. He's been around. It's not his first barbecue. <laughs> Marcus Hudson had an interception for a touchdown here in the second half. And his second pick puts the death into Maryland's bold dreams and hopes. That's the fourth turnover of the day for Maryland. And that'll just about do it for Sam Hollenbach and the Terps. What a game by Marcus Hudson early on. He drew a couple of penalties, but then atoned in a big way. Maryland without any timeouts remaining. Today's Nexium player of the game is Marcus Hudson. A couple of interceptions. One of them for a touchdown, that last one to salt this victory away, and their first conference win at home this year. Marcus Hudson, the 5'10 junior. Five seconds to go, and Chuck Amato's team wins it. 20 to 14, they become bowl eligible. And they're making a little bit of noise here at Carter Finley.